welcome to episode 37 of the Avocado Gamescast, the Avocado's gaming podcast. Today's podcast is going to be all about the annual E3 Expo that happened in Los Angeles earlier this month. We're going to give you our thoughts on the games that are showcased and provide some analysis of the various press events. But before we get to that, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Andrea Rene, and today I'm joined by Sid Schumann and Sean Day9 Plot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm Merv, and today I'm chatting with Science is Bad. Hello. And our faithful editor, the Kappa. What's up, guys? So, how are y'all doing? Good. Yeah, good. pretty good. Glad to hear. It. <laughs> no, no further, <laughs> no further details, please. No, nothing else to be said. Um, it's yeah. Father's Day. I'm sleeping in. I'm, I'm having a good day so far. Uh, I drank a lot of alcohol yesterday, so my day is a little bit, you know, it, it started off rough, but right now it's pretty okay. I had way too much dessert yesterday because of a, a neighborhood festival, so I am still kind of hopped up on sugar. So that's mm -hmm. how things are going right now. So it's been a while since we've all chatted together. What have you guys been playing? Um, oh, I can... Okay, ahead, no, you sorry. Start. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I'm, I can start. Uh, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've been on the podcast, so uh, I played a bunch of games. Um, I went a little bit into fighting games. I bought a fighting stick and uh, did a little bit of that. Uh, played some Stellaris. Um, yeah, so I went in many different directions like some PC gaming some PS4 a little bit on Nintendo Switch but I haven't been using it a lot lately like it has been just laying down on my table and gathering dust um, but I, I I think I would like to talk about a little bit about uh, the game I just played through uh, God of War oh nice yeah uh, apropos of uh, Father's Day so uh, I think that's that's fitting um yeah so um it's an interesting game i played through it i mostly enjoyed it i don't know if you played it uh and you uh, merv or uh, kappa have you played god of war uh i'm about halfway into it honestly um uh -huh. I, it's kind of i don't know kind of have a weird relationship with the game i guess um i don't know i'll let you finish it i'll talk about my thoughts on it Sure. Um, and you, Merv, have you played God no, of War? I, I haven't played it because okay. um, I got busy with uh, other things and wasn't able to to make time for it. Uh, no, there's you know, I need I need to play my Weeaboo games. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. It's also a pretty long game. I think it took me like uh, thirty hours to play through the uh, play through the whole thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't have that kind of time these days. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically my one game I I played for like three weeks or something. Um, yeah, it's 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 a strange game. I think like most of the combat works well. Um, it has like it instead of like the usual. Um, hmm, I'm not even sure if it was a third person perspective with Kratos. It was like a uh, mm, hmm. the over the shoulder kind of. Perspective. Yeah, yeah. Now this one is over the shoulder. I'm thinking about how to explain the older games. Like it had like a the camera that cameras. was like, yeah, fixed cameras in like corners or whatever, and you just like kind of sometimes following you through the scenery. Um, so yeah, that changed uh, a fair bit. Um, Kratos is less of a angry jerk right now. He's kind of like a grumpy guy, older guy that's annoyed. Um, and he has a son and they have to like go on a journey and, you know, just accomplish this one task that they have been, uh, given. And, uh, it's kind of an adventure game and also kind of like a lot of puzzles and the combat is, um, also like the combat is uh, based on, uh, pattern recognition and it's kind of slow and like methodical. But it not not like in the Dark Souls kind of way where you have like very long wind up animations. The enemies have all long wind up animations, and that's why you can like kind of predict where, where when when's your chance to kind of get in and have a couple of you know get in a couple of shots. Yeah. Um, 
but mostly your 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 moves are pretty quick except for the couple of specials that you have uh so i think the combat and the story are um uh, i would say like um, they're both pretty prominent i think that like i have some problems with the combat and i have some problems with the story um and the combat is as i said it's pretty good it has a lot of like pattern recognition and that's satisfying um especially when you're playing like when you're fighting against really hard op- opponents like bosses um you want to be able to take advantage of a pattern yeah and, and and like uh, um, one of the bosses like optional bosses of the game like took me about 30 minutes like one fight took me about 30 minutes and it was all like each each shot the boss made and that hit me it cost me like half of my life so i had to be like really you know uh on my toes when it comes to like their attacks and i had to recognize everything they did um so that was fun mostly um i think like it the game gives you like 50 or 60 special moves to choose from and you just kind of pick three of them and you don't need any other moves throughout the whole game uh, it, there's way too much stuff and you don't y- need to use any of it. Um, there's like, you don't only have special abilities for your weapons and like two special ability slots per weapon you have, but also like a, a special ability for your amulet or something. And then you have also like special moves and some, I, there's a bunch of shit that I have never even touched. Um, there's also, uh, weapons, like in the kind of Diablo weapons, um, not quite weapons, like, uh, parts of weapons you can upgrade in your armor, uh, that you, th- there's like, is it kind of like yeah. Dragon Age Inquisition where you could have like a separate handle or a step or a, a yeah, something like that. Blade? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that, that's fine. I, I haven't found it like interesting to look for those items or like upgrade them. It's kind of like was a um, busy work for me, you know. I, I it wasn't like super pleasant. Um, so, but, but apart from all of that, uh, all of the additional things that you can do or you can upgrade or find or attach to your axe or whatever, uh, the moment to moment combat feels very good. And I think that's what people like really uh, latch onto when you know reviewing the game. Um, I think that that co- that moment to moment combat is excellent. Um, uh, the problem is with I think the story and you... it's an okay story, but it it's like kind of. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just going to say it's not really kind of satisfying. Also, I see a lot of problems that people have been writing about, like Waypoint's article about like the uh, portrayal of motherhood in this game is kind of toxic. Um, so I, I I I saw that when playing that game. This game, I don't think it's. Like extremely bad. I think it has some problems, and like um, maybe like every everyone in this game is kind of a asshole. Uh, so no one like no one you know is looking looking good. exactly uh, exactly when people are talking about like toxic motherhood. I mean Kratos isn't a good dad, <laughs> so he's also kind of an asshole father. Um, uh, I don't know. The, the story is problematic a little bit. I, it has some issues. Um, the, one, the cool thing that they do with techni- technical side of the story is that it's like one long shot, so the camera never cuts. It's always like one shot without cutting. So it's like the Birdman, but God of War. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what they were going for. There's like a couple of like you know transitions that you're like uh, going through this light door that the screen goes white and like something like that. But like most of the game is like without any cuts. So that's interesting technical aspect to it. Um, yeah, mostly I liked it. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't say that the story is satisfying all that much. And as I said, there's some there's some weird portrayals of of of. Uh, parenthood overall um, but I overall enjoyed it I okay. think so worth playing 
Good to know. I think so. It it also looks very well, very good. Like it looks um, on the technical aspect of it, it's one of the prettier games on the system. Do you have a, uh, a vanilla PS4 yep. or a PS4 Pro? Uh, vanilla PS4. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think the motion capture of the facial captures not that good i think like <laughs> sometimes there's like stone faces a little bit when they should be showing more emotion um but maybe i've been spoiled by other games that that do it better uh yeah, like but, oh yeah series, oh, for instance yeah that, yeah that 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 those games are fantastic when it comes to that uh so yeah um, i think i came out of it like on the positive side but it has some problems okay. what about how how about how do you feel about it kappa uh, well, I'm not I'm not done with it yet, and yeah. to kind of preface this, I don't want to be, you know, too hard on it, but like I've always kind of felt like I guess what the big Sony games are these this generation, right? Uh, like Horizon and um, Last of Us and Uncharted and stuff. I've always kind of felt a disconnect with Sony's games for some reason with what people say they've gotten from the story and what I've gotten from the story. Does that make sense? Like. Yeah. People rave at a lot of these games, and then I play them, and I kind of feel like, well, yeah, I see what you're saying, but this feels empty. It feels kind of like like, like you're getting the emotions right, and you're showing me this grand vista and playing the music, and everything's right there, and I should be getting it. But like, for some reason, I don't. I don't know how else to explain it. But I, I understand what you're saying. There's something like very not offending, like workmanlike quality to them. Like they're very well made. But I never get emotional uh, ever playing them. I never get anything but the, like. But every, it's what the rest of the internet does. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So a I'm bunch like, of people do. That's what's fine. What's wrong with me? And <laughs> God of War. The one thing I've been saying, I think every time we talk about it, is why does it even have to be Kratos? And halfway into the game, I'm like, yes. Why? I feel like I was right. This doesn't have to be a God of War game. I would have got this if this was some random. Uh, you know norse guy and his kid and it's the same story it feels like they do a lot to shoehorn the fact that this is kratos the god of war into the game when that doesn't really mean much to me at this point you know Uh, Um, not spoiling anything i think closer to the end of the game uh uh, kratos's backstory plays a little like a bigger part uh but it still feels disconnected i i agree with yeah, and that disconnected is the best way to kind of describe it. It's like he doesn't have a relationship with these gods. He doesn't have a relationship with this land. It all just kind of is like I, I don't know. It, it just feels like he's there because he ha- because it's Kratos and God of War sells games. Yeah. Um, so that's my one thing. the The combat is good but not great. Um, <clears throat> is the best way I'd describe it. Like a lot of the little problems you had with it, uh, I kind of did too. Um, th- there's there's a few ways that the game tries to kind of make the combat look more cinematic. I would say yes. that doesn't necessarily work for how the game actually plays. Oh, um, I, yeah, I'm gonna have I, that I, same complaint about something else later. <laughs> I, I really like it. I don't want to sound too negative on it, but like the reason I haven't finished it, and it like you said, it is a longer game than you'd expect. Yeah. But there's a lot of wandering around. Um, there's kind of like a weird. Okay, we're gonna let you out in the open world now. Uh, take the training rules off that I don't know if I don't know if a God of War game really needs you know um, it kind of feels like they played something like I don't know Horizon or The Witcher or something We're like okay yeah well, let's let the player wander around but the way you kind of get the side quests and things happen um, it doesn't feel organic it kind of just feels yeah. like they, they looked at like other open world games like yep let's do that but it, I, I don't want to be negative on it because I, I, I do enjoy it it's just like I wanted this to be a game I sat down and just like got you know lost mm-hmm. in it and, and played all thirty hours and found every little secret and, and really loved. But like 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 uh, um, Uncharted, like mm-hmm. Horizon, it just it never hits that for me. It never mm-hmm. hits that like the way the storytelling pulls me in on some of those on some other games. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying it, it's. It could when be I read, a, a, it could be a game that connects with you more. Yeah, it might be. It might by might, might be the end, by the end, but it's not the ten of ten greatest generational oh, story no, no. I've ever seen in the world type stuff. Oh. You know, on, on, around on the internet, and that's it's hard for me because like you guys know, I'm I'm generally positive on video games. I want to enjoy them. I want to like them, but it's hard for me when I get these weird disconnects with 
me and everybody else where you sit there and you're like, wait a minute, is this me or is this, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's plenty of games that do that. Um, you know, it, I would, I would, when it comes to side quest, I would compare this more to like Tomb Raider because it's not quite, do. yeah, it's not quite open world, but it has like uh, open locations that you can kind of, you know, explore and maybe you'll find something. It doesn't feel, uh, side quests don't feel, uh, feel more like fetch quests and more like mm, discon- disconnected with the main story like they barely matter actually yeah, um, I you, agree. you can just yeah you can upgrade yourself with them or anything something like that but they don't feel necessary at all um, there's one side quest that I found a little bit interesting and uh, but the rest of it is like kind of boring explore and I mean uh, the, the very it has some uh, again, people don't like using that word, but Metroidvania aspect to it—that you go through a location and you're like, "How That's the hell I do I get?" Compare it to. Yeah, yeah. How the hell do, do I get to the secret? And then you you, you kind of go through the game a little bit, and you're like, "Oh, I got this ability now that yep. can like, yeah, shatter these you red know, things." You yeah. know what game uh, pops immediately into mind when the more I hear you talk about it? Uh, do you guys remember Dark Siders Two? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's yeah, that's yeah. what I, it feels a lot like in yeah. terms of like game world, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, I think, I think most mm-hmm. people enjoy that game, but I mean that that's what I I, I would kind of compare it to is that yeah. style of game. You never really feel like you know the world itself is is natural and you fit in it, but your character is just kind of like an outsider, yeah. um, which is a cool place for Kratos to be, I guess, if you're really into the God of War lore and stuff. But mm-hmm. I mean, if they called this series, you know. Northlander, and it was about a Viking yeah. family. It wouldn't change one damn thing to me. I know you said it's going to change, but like a I little mean, bit, just I, a little bit. The thing in the back of my mind is always the baggage the God of War series has, which just like rampant, like push X to sex mini games, you know, and like <laughs> yeah, th- like, there's not nothing like that in the game. Yeah, this time, yeah. Uh, what what I'm gonna want one thing I'm going to say also that's kind of a a plus uh, is that. It does what God of War always did well. So the sense of scale. Uh, yes, yeah. There's some boss fights and there's some like characters that are really humongous and like they come close to you and you feel their massiveness. Like they are, oh, they're they're gargantuan and that's cool. And and um, you interact yeah. with those characters. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's interesting. Even very um, early in the game, they throw out some very cool characters and you know stuff for you to fight and do that really like you're saying brings the scale into play yeah yeah the scale is amazing and also i do like one of the uh like a supporting character that, yeah i know yeah. who you're talking about yeah, yeah yeah he's pretty cool and he has some fun things to say so yeah uh that that the, the, the dialogue in the game is pretty good overall um uh, apart from the story uh where where it's going and how it's meandering a little bit i like the dialogue so yep that's pretty much it Glad to hear it. Yeah, so God of War seems seems like an interesting e- experience overall. Uh, and I think I'm actually playing something similar right now. I just started playing Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, mm-hmm. um, which is not a game that really has grabbed me instantly. I'm, I'm only an hour in, so I don't know exactly if I should be giving a verdict on it yet. Right. But... I, I do sense some of the some of the kinds of problems with it that Decap was mentioning earlier with God of War. Um, anyway, to back up a little bit, it's a uh, it's one of those uh, adventure slash hack and slash not exactly hack and slash slash brawler kind of games. Um, a little bit like God of War, but much shorter. And this mm-hmm. one is about a a woman who is suffering from psychosis as she goes on a quest to rescue her her, uh, her partner. Yeah. Um, and that's where things sort of go off the rails, like almost from the beginning, which is not a, always a good sign. Um, I'm sure this is just a bad initial first impression, but... Yeah, that game... Go ahead. I'll let you. Let me put it this way. I'm already tired of the psychosis audio effects. Like I'm tired. Mm. I was tired of it half an hour in. 
that's not good if I'm going to have to stick with it for the entire game. Um, at a certain point, it sort of loses its power. And I know they're trying to kind of be true to how some of the suffering from, say, schizophrenia might, might feel. But as a game experience, it becomes background noise, and I don't think that's the effect they were going for. Mm -hmm. They do one really cool thing with it where um, the voices in your head warn you about enemies that are behind you. And I think that's a really neat effect. But otherwise, I think they've kind of overexploited it and it doesn't really work at a certain mm -hmm. point. Um, overall, though, if we're moving on to sort of the game more generally, um, I re it's it looks really gorgeous like it looks amazing and it's it's crazy how much like how much effort and and beauty has been poured into this budget title so this is like a, a 30 dollar um, game when it was released right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it's a ninja theory game right yeah. it, they, they do good stuff with faces especially yeah it's it's kind of like um i mean i played enslaved years after it was released but yeah it's, it's somewhat similar in that regard Mm -hmm. um, although no platforming in this one, just walking around and opening doors. Um, speaking of opening doors, sometimes they won't open and that's bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You have to stand in the exact right position just to open the um, stupid door. And like, I'm just yeah. in front of it. What's wrong with you guys? Um, also, those those glyph finding puzzles are just horrendous. Oh yes. my god, yeah. they're That's, the worst. Uh, I was waiting for you to get to it. Yeah, so here, exactly. Here's the Me thing: too. they don't tutorialize this very well because the first puzzle you do, it's literally just the glyph you're looking for is imprinted on a wall. And yeah, like, I okay, had no great. idea how to do it. Yeah, great. I found this sort of by accident. All I have to do is find the exact symbol in the environment, yeah. uh, the place where this thing, the shadow is on the wall, and then you get to the second puzzle and there are none of these things and it turns out that you have to line up pieces of the environment to fit the glyph but that's just not yeah. clear a priori it also doesn't work very well every yeah, time yeah you can be looking right at it and you've got to just kind of get it from the right angle or like yeah. for some reason you've got to climb a set of stairs and look at it rather than looking at the ground I, yeah I, uh, I, I, I don't it... I was waiting for you to get to that glyph part <laughs> Man. it's awful awful I played it for two hours and the worst I had it is what well, like in this burned down village, and uh, your controller rumbles whenever you're like close to the glyph, I think, from what I remember, or something like that, or it guides you to it, whatever. And I was sure I was in the right location, but I didn't know how the hell, where the hell was sure I supposed to be looking. And turns out I had to go from a completely different direction in order to match it, but the game didn't inform me of that. Just like, like weirdly screwed me over and that made me think that I was doing the right thing and when the, I was doing the wrong the thing. thing. Glad I'm playing the, this with mouse and keyboard because... Yeah. yeah. The, the thing about those sections off. too is like you're... Ha I don't, it's like such an atmospheric game and like the world is doing so much stuff and then it's... I think... I don't know if this was in a review I read or something but somebody was like this game wants to remind you it's a video game every couple minutes with one of these puzzles or you know like yeah. one of these weird locked doors or something. It's like oh yeah that's right. I've still got to go find the key or the checkpoint or like you know i don't know how to describe it like it, it takes you out of it rather than helps you get back into it because it feels so inorganic to the world mechanical like, very yeah mechanical. exactly Speaking well, of in, the, in the game that sorry sorry, sorry. yeah, yeah. The, the combat in this game is a little wonky and yeah it's mm -hmm. like it's like they described the the combat in god of war the animations are are very clunky and it seems like they take too long sometimes to execute what you're doing it's not a very snappy kind of game. Sometimes it doesn't feel like what's being animated on screen reflects the buttons I pressed. Ah. Yeah, it's it's a very clunky sort of combat. And again, because this game doesn't tutorialize anything, um, sometimes when I get knocked to the ground, sometimes I don't know what button to press to get back up. Sometimes I can get back up, and sometimes it's just instant death, and I'm not sure which one's which. So it's just really kind of frustrating. I mean, if they're going for this this kind of feeling where you feel like you're you're being oppressed by the environment, it's yeah. working very well, but it's also working in tandem with a lot of frustration at 
not like how you should feel within the stuff in the game, but just all these accessory things like the bad puzzles and the weird tutorializing and you know strange bugs and doors not opening properly. Um, so yeah, this game has not put its best foot forward, but maybe in the yeah. next few hours it'll improve. I don't uh, really know. I have to say that a the main actress does a hell of a job to mm -hmm. uh, convey yeah. a lot of emotion in the story, and b uh, the music is fantastic sometimes. Like it, there's one boss fight where the music was just spectacular, and I think like those are the two big things that the game oh, has going shit. for this it. Game has boss fights. It yeah. has so a boss fight. That. Yeah, it, it, so it, it's not it's not a very tough boss fight though, no. and yeah, the music you, is very cool. So you'll figure it out quickly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look forward to when I get there in the next couple. It's of it's not Dark Souls. I'll put it that way. You're yeah, not gonna... no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, that, and and I agree that the combat is clunky. Like yeah, yeah, I do too. It is. All right, so that's Hellblade. Um, Kappa, you want to talk about Jurassic World Evolution? I do. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm in love. Um, <laughs> Hold on to your butts, everyone. I, I don't know how this happened, first of all. I want to point out to everybody that IGN gave this game a 48, and it's been driving me crazy because it's the most clickbaity review I've ever seen of a video game. They clearly let this game like everybody else is like 80s which is right about where this game deserves to be honest it's it might not be 100 but it's a very good uh yeah. sim management sim which is a... um everyone had gave it above uh, above 40 oh yeah on yeah the, on well, the above IGN? 40. well, well uh. above 40 ign Dang. gave it a 48 which just okay. to me is like a 48 is like a game that's fundamentally broken right like well that i think the video game scoring system may, might be fundamentally yeah. broken uh, but the way but, i see it is a 48 is a, is a game that's functional that you really hate like fundamentally yeah. broke would be for me like a 20 but <laughs> yeah but so, i understand that very few games get that low yeah it's like they found a guy who hated management sims and was like hey review this game because everything he says is like the opposite of what I wanted in, in this game. So I just wanted to point that out that if anybody goes and looks at reviews like, whoa, 48. Yeah, now this is more of like a it's more like a seven or an eight, but it's not perfect. But as a management sim, so every I, I hope you guys have played a management sim before. We're talking, you um, know, like a But I was a huge roller coaster tycoon junkie back okay. in the day. Uh, plenty, this is plenty of games. Yeah, this is so. This is more of a roller coaster tycoon than I think. What some people were, I don't know how they were, made this very clear to me in the advertising that this was what this game was, right? Um, but I think some tycoon with dinosaurs. Yes, yes, and so it's got a really cool loop, like gameplay loop. Um, you've got three factions to kind of appease. You've got entertainment, science, and security. Uh, they give you little <laughs> missions that don't change too much right like the missions aren't like the 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 science uh really wants you to build a you know a, a whole new theme park it's just like kind of what you're already doing but keep going down that path to keep science happy same thing with security you know, make sure the dinosaurs are enclosed make sure the you've got a fossil research stuff like that it's it, it's all very organic feeling the way they give you these little contracts as you upgrade your your standing with the three factions, one you know like if you do something for security, it'll drop entertainment. If you do something, you know, so there's a lot of like give and take between the three factions until you're making them happy enough to give you specific missions that advance your park um, certain stages. As you work through the islands, there's five different islands. Each one has specific tasks on each island that you have to do, and each island itself is a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. The hardest one for me by far. It was a really thin island with not a lot of room to build. So you really had to prioritize who you were going to appease, number one, and then number two, what buildings you were going to use to do it, right? Because you just yeah. couldn't have it all. You know what that – it sort of reminds me of um, one of the earliest scenarios from the old roller coaster tycoon where you have to build an, arch an archipelago. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I would say that that's a very, that's a very familiar thing to most people who have played – building sims is like oh here's the really i can't build a lot of stuff island here's the island that gets a lot of tornadoes there's an island that gets a lot of tornadoes so you're always constantly like well yeah i can do all this stuff but if i don't maintain storm shelter coverage all that can be erased and then my dinosaurs get out and everything becomes jurassic park the movie you know um which is fun so in there, its own way <laughs> yeah yeah it is and, and there's a lot going on in this game the dinosaurs themselves look 
fucking great. I mean, they, they look so good. And you're always constantly... They, they, they don't have feathers, though, do they? No, no. That's a shame. They're very Jurassic Park dinosaurs, mm-hmm. if that makes okay. sense. I mean, they, they went with, with the classic, with the way they yeah. look in Jurassic Park. Um, the, the thing about, like... So, you know, like in a roller coaster tycoon game, you know, maybe they'll do something where, like over time. If you're not building new roller coasters, guests are getting tired of the same roller coasters. It's the same way with the dinosaurs. Right. So that that Triceratops you pumped out when you first got on this map, it's just not the draw it used to be, you know. So now you have to splice its DNA with, uh, you know, shark DNA to make it you know, have more attack so that when it, when you put it in a cage with a Diana Nikes or however you pronounce that one, you know, like they fight a little bit more, but they don't either really kill each other. And it's, so you kind of want this. Wow. That's weird. You You kind of dino cage matches. Yes. Yes. I thought the parts were supposed to be humane. (laughs) Well, not necessarily, but so what your entertainment guy is usually telling you is he's like, they want the park to feel dangerous, but not be dangerous. So you have to ride this fine line, right? Like, think about your roller coasters and roller coaster tycoon. You know, you don't want people barfing all over as soon as they get it off, but you want it to be thrilling. And you want to, like, yeah. there's always going to be people who are fine to go ride the log flume in, in roller coaster tycoon. That's your little herbivore garden in Jurassic Park or Jurassic World Evolution. But there's also going to be all those people who are like, man, I really want to see what happened when a T Rex fights a Styracosaurus, you know? And so you can kind of genetically engineer them up enough so that, like, the Styracosaurus has a chance against the T-Rex, you know? Um, you drop the T-Rex's attack, but boost the, the, the Styracosaurus's defense, and you kind of let them wander, and eventually they'll get pissed enough that they're sharing the same cage. One will panic, they'll start to fight. What you, what you ideally want is a fight that doesn't really kill either of them because you can medicate them and bring their health back up, but gives the crowd something to watch. And this is very strange. I never would have thought that uh, this game would go in that direction. Well, it, it, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it should have like dinosaur cockfights. I, I wouldn't say it's like the main core. The, like the main. I, I get core, it. I get it. But it's the a main, feature. Yeah, the main core is okay. Here's where all my cor- carnivores live. Here's where all my uh, herbivores live. Here's where the Indominus Rex lives. <laughs> he lives by himself, you know. Yeah. But then everybody else, kind of like you can mix and match. So what I would end up doing is I'd usually have like four enclosures, right? I'd have my herbivores because you can stick everything in there, right? You know, and they'll yeah. usually, as long as you don't overcrowd them, they'll usually leave each other alone. They might get in little fights, but usually it doesn't kill a dinosaur. Um, then you've got your carnivores. You've got to be really careful who you put together in there, right? Like you, if you put raptors in with a T-Rex, generally they'll leave each other alone because they kind of detect, you know, that they're a mismatch. Um, but if you put together 10 velociraptors and then 10 you know, Carnotauruses or whatever, they're going to end up fighting because they're about the same size and they feel like they can take each other. Um, and then you've got to put a Dominus Rex by himself or he'll just murder everything. <laughs> He's like the biggest asshole. Uh, when he gets out, it's a game changer because he gets out and he just decides to murder everything. Um, but so that's kind of how the game goes, right? So eventually they'll say, hey, like, you know, your park's getting a little stale or like for this mission, we want these dinosaurs to fight. Or there'll be missions where it's like, we basically want you to like piss these dinosaurs off enough till they break out. Because we want to analyze what a dinosaur breakout looks like. And, you know, that's like a security mission, if, you, if it makes sense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so the game does a lot to push you out of your comfort zones of just being a park management. Um, a couple – I really like the DNA mechanic. Um, so basically what you do is if you want to upgrade, like, the shark DNA, you research shark DNA. You send teams out. They go find DNA for – triceratops they come back once you get a hundred percent genome so you can make a perfect you know recreation of the triceratops you get to tinker do you want to make it live longer do you want to make it disease resistant so you're not always having to like fight back uh salmonella outbreaks or whatever do you want to you you get to custom your own dinosaurs even down to the colors um so i kind of enjoyed all that um you have to balance the entertainment of the island so there's a lot of like building arcades and bars and like general kind of you know the 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 gift shops of, of roller coaster tycoon there's a lot of building of that um my big drawback right now is they don't really necessarily give you a true sandbox which i love messing around in, in sandbox i know it's not for everybody but i love messing around in sandbox they don't really give you one till you're about halfway into the game oh, and okay. then the sandbox island itself feels really contained it's isla nublar i mean mm-hmm. if you're a jurassic park fan that they give you that island um okay. But there, it's not a big enough island to really do everything on it still. 
So the one thing I'd say about it is all the islands, like even though there's one island particularly that's like this is the tiny compressed island, most of the islands are like you can't have it all, uh, which is okay for you know a building sim game or a management sim game to have that. If you're doing but I always stuff, right? right, but in a in a sandbox, I think give me an island where I can put, you know. Because because when it comes to the carnivores, you can't have usually more than two or three types in there without them killing each other, right? So mm-hmm. if I want a, if I want a raptor pen and I want a T Rex pen and I want a Dominus Rex pen, which is what the movie does, you know. But yeah. if you give a T Rex too small of a pen, he goes he goes crazy and then he just breaks out and then now you have a T Rex wherever he wants to go. Um, right. So. I really like it. I, I enjoy it. I, I wish they gave me a... I'm sure... The one thing I'll say, and I, I say this for some developers, not others, but Frontier is, the to me, one of the best developers at listening to what the fans want. So mm-hmm. I... And, and Planet uh, Planet Coaster really came along with a lot of the mod support and a lot of stuff like that that they, they allowed. So Support it with a lot of post-launch content. Yes. Yes. They never really fixed the one thing that, that pissed me off about that game, which was the path building. But oh, yeah. I, I can't say that they, they didn't support the game post-launch. They yeah, path really building now is, is is simplified in a lot of the on a lot of ways. The building placement still has a lot of weirdness to me. There's a lot of mm-hmm. times where it looks like I'm trying to place a building in a clear space, but it's just for whatever reason it's saying terrain constricted and stuff. But oh, it look I feel like work. I have Yeah, I I'm like it looks like I have enough room, but for some reason I don't, but um, I mean, it's it's not anywhere near as bad, and I, I think that long-term Frontier is going to get this game perfect, and I, I can see them saying, you know, way down the line, hey, you want a real sandbox, here you go. You know, yeah, here's I, a I giant island that. you want. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah I, I like it a lot. Um, recommend it if you're a Jurassic Park or a management sim game. Just take your time with it. I feel like a lot of people want to beat the game, but why? You know what I mean? It's it's one of those, like, yeah, build your I, enjoy yeah. it. You never beat, say, SimCity 2000, right? Right. You just keep right. playing. Yeah. yeah. Have any of you heard about uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis? Yes, that's exactly what this pretty much is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if, if you like that, imagine that with like some different layers on it, um, mm-hmm. and and way better looking dinosaurs. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I very much enjoy. Uh, um, sim games so i will give it a shot when it goes on sale probably yeah yeah so mm-hmm. that's a pretty good summary of, of the game yeah so let's move on from talking about virtual dinosaurs to corporate dinosaurs oh oh i nailed that segue um, yeah <laughs> let's talk about e3 um so e3 happened uh, we're recording this on uh, on all right, Father's that's Day. Good <laughs> E3 happened. That's all we E3 need happened. E3 this happened. is science. Thank um, you. So E3 happened. We're recording this on, on Father's Day 2018. So E3 happened this past weekend. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I think this was overall a pretty good E3. Like It's nothing... the best one I can remember in a long time. I will say that. Yeah. I will say there's, yeah. nothing, there's nothing from E3 that like super impressed me. But yeah. I didn't look at anything out of E3 and say, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah. Um, um, I, ha- I had a couple of moments like that. I had a couple of moments. I, okay. This one, I would say I was like, I, I kind of, like, at the end of every show, I was pretty, with one weird exception, I guess we'll get to later. But, um, I mean, at the end of every show, I was pretty like, yeah, that looks like cool. I want to buy some of those games. I, there was very few things that I was like, what the fuck? But... I mean, there was some stuff in the show, but like not the general feeling of, of a show where I just was kind of like, well, one, but I, I agree with you. I think this was a good year for E3. Yeah. It kind of feels like they're getting the formula down a little bit more. I don't think, yeah, I don't think there are any train wreck conferences this year. And there no, have been, no. There have been train wreck conferences. Like uh, the first PC gaming One's show. close. <laughs> yeah, one, yeah one, one is close. I, th- I think I know which one you're going to say, and I... And let's start. Let's get right into let's, Square let's get, Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. So let's start with EA, which had the first conference on Saturday. Um, yeah. yeah. So at, at EA, they talked a lot about um, Battlefield Five. They they spent a great portion of the second half of, of the conference just doing a deep dive on Anthem. They revealed mm-hmm. Unravel Two and released it that very day. So you know, overall, they had they had a lot of interesting things uh, coming out of that yeah. conference. 
uh, Anthem looks interesting to me. I mean, I'm saying as as a diehard, I I'll play Destiny till they stop making Destiny games. Not gonna lie to you. I mean, I know where everybody lands on. I'm not trying to convince anybody to get into it at this point. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But I'm interested to see what Anthem can do with pretty much the same formula, honestly, um, yeah, and make it feel not. different. Yeah, it's it's basically just seems like third person Destiny and yeah. From everything I've seen of the game makes it look like it would be a well-made game. And I know it's just not for me, and that's yeah. fine. Um, well, here's, here's the thing about Destiny, that I think yeah. even the most people who hate Destiny, the core gunplay, shooting mechanics, whatever you want to call it in Destiny, feels amazing. The, the, the get in, jump in, get on the ground, mess with your weapon loadout and shoot things feels good. It feels like Halo, which always felt good, you know? Um the biggest concern I ha- and then the story sucks. So then Anthem kind of feels like it's going the other way with it, right? Like the story is going to be Bioware. It's going to have romance. You know what I mean? Like all this stuff that Bioware has. And I don't know if they announced romance, but I'm assuming. But it's an RPG, right? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Destiny isn't so much of an RPG as it is a shooter with numbers, you know? Um, it has like that MMO taste to it. But I'm wondering how they're going to basically split the difference. And Bioware has the good story, but everything I've seen with the shooting, third player feels really floaty. It feels like you don't get a good sense of damage that you're doing, um, which is a problem in a, sh- in a game that's centered around shooting. You know, yeah. um, If you want to do what Mass Effect did and have targetable attacks, I guess you can, but then... Um, that's going to get boring quick. You know, you're going to max your character out and you're just going to run around, you know, tapping whatever lock on button and then hitting a button and things falling over, um, which was the problem the vision had. So instead they made everything a division of bullet sponge. And so now you're having to shoot, you know, a guy armed with trash 500 times in the face with a sniper rifle, because that's the only way you can make the game difficult, you know? Um, yeah. So I think they're going to try to strike a balance and just make it more like how a first person shooter would feel. That's the sense I get. Like the way, um, the way the iron sights uh, mode works for this, uh, or shouldn't say iron sights. The way like the the aim mode works. Aim down, yeah. Yeah, aim, aim down, down sights. sights. Yeah. Is it just uh, it zooms in a lot instead of just sort of centering you on on what you're aiming? It 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 almost zooms you into like this quasi first person mode where you see mostly just the gun. Right. And so I think that could work. But yeah. I don't know. It, it, this is definitely a could work game for me. It's going to be weird until I, I I'm going to buy it. Uh, we'll talk about why I guess in a little bit, but um, it's it's a game that could work to me, and I really want to see it. And I really hate the feeling that this is Bioware's make or break game, honestly, because this is not. I don't think this game's going to be better than Destiny. I know there's a lot of hate out there for Destiny, but I just Destiny's polished in weird ways that I think a lot of people who aren't into the destiny release cycle don't see um you know they just see it from the outside it's just you know okay well haha you know space wizards or whatever but i feel like it's polished in ways people don't see and i don't know that bioware has the 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 combat credentials to do it you know Mm -hmm. to to sit there and look at well this auto rifle's time to kill is 0.3 seconds higher so it's become the meta that everybody uses and the game is boring because everybody just uses this one gun Whereas um, if that happens in Destiny, they kick that gun in the pants, and then you know, but you know, it's it's a very fine line. Um, mm-hmm. it, but in a looter shooter, the loot's got to feel good, or it's going to get so boring quick. They do have some MMO experience with the Old Republic, so yeah. I don't think it's a lost cause. But I, I I I would be a little skeptical of it. It's not quite an MMO though, right? It's like right. a it's... multiplayer game that it, it's instant, instant, instant. Well, what... Sorry, yeah. yeah. What, what happens um, with these types of games, though? I mean, you guys play Borderlands, right? Yeah. I don't know if you're like, no, think about I actually, the... I actually played it. <laughs> I've only played yeah, if you haven't, there, ah, there was like it. a shield in the game that everybody had had called the B, right? It was mm-hmm. like if you wanted to do anything that game, you needed the B. Um, mm-hmm. in, in Destiny, early on, it was the Galahorn. If you didn't have the Galahorn, you couldn't you couldn't even raid. People wouldn't even invite you. Um, these types of games, you know, they, they become loot centric in a weird way that I don't think Bioware wants their games to be. But in order to fix that, you've got to go around and tinker with stuff um, at, at a level that I'm not sure they've ever showed me they could do. Um, I, so think that... the, I think the only thing they need to fix to make the game interesting is have more enemy uh, designs than uh, Destiny has, because Destiny has like four enemy designs. 
Yeah, I mean, I, but I don't know enough about uh, Anthem's the game that I want. I'll say this: it's not may, maybe my favorite game at E3, but it's the game I want to play most. If that makes sense, like mm, okay. I I haven't yeah, gotten enough from there, it. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it can be great, and it's Bioware, so I'm predisposed to love the shit out of it, and it's right in my wheelhouse because I'm a huge Destiny fan. But yeah. but the part of me that's scary is that if this game doesn't do everything perfectly, and I don't think any game, Division, Destiny, any game that's really tried this genre has been perfect out the gate, I don't want this to be the game that kills Bioware because they're taking a huge risk at... They're already dead. They're already <laughs> dead. So, but I... Yeah. yeah. The, the thing is... Um, if this game if this game's successful, then Bioware becomes Dice, where right. they become the Anthem Studio, and every few years they get to put out a Vanity Project, and uh. that Vanity Project is going to be Dragon Age. That's crazy, so they'll right? Never another, they'll never make another IP. It's just going to yeah. be like how Dice is the Battlefield Studio that occasionally puts out Mirror's Edge. They'll be the Anthem Studio that occasionally puts out Dragon yeah. Age games. But and we that... knew this for years now that Electronic Arts is like poison. Like when whatever it buys, it just I mean, kind of like yeah. in a way. But a lot of these studios wouldn't exist if EA. I don't know. I, I've defended EA more often on this podcast than I probably want to. But I don't like the company. I mean, <laughs> I, I get it. I get why people don't. But you know what happened before EA and Activision? If a company had a stinker, they went out of business. Period. I mean, and then all that talent went a million different places. So I think yes, they put them on short leases, and they tend to run franchises in the ground. But what the what the alternative was 10, 15 years ago is, I mean, think of how many studios released one bad game and went under, you but know? Same it's happened, the norm. Like, in, in the companies EA bought, sometimes they have never released anything ever again. Like, it bought plenty of companies that kind of like went silent and they probably moved the people to different projects and... Well, I, I mean, like, you it, know. it's really easy to say, but like... Okay, let's look at like Command and Conquer for example, right? Like, sure. like RTS is. I mean, you can hate EA for killing Command and Conquer, but also RTS is kind of a dead genre. Oh yeah, Starcraft, I agree with you. Starcraft no, no, Two no. move units, period. And Starcraft Two would be like kind of the the golden grail, you know. So I'm sure they're EA is looking at like, well, people want a real true con- Command and Conquer. They say they do on the internet, but uh, then when people, that game nah, comes out, nobody you buys know, it, and that's how we exactly. Command and Conquer. No one, no one, yeah, no which, one will play it. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like you know the hate for EA makes sense and for how they manage the studios, yeah. but for the fact that they give, I feel like they give game companies a lot of freedom to do what they want, and I don't they think that's they get true exactly. In that I don't think they give I, a I lot of freedom to companies. Like a, I don't know. We we don't have sort of. Yeah, we don't. A good but into this. judging from what a company made before Electronic Arts bought it and after Electronic Arts bought it, usually it changes dramatically, which makes me think that the company is managed heavily from Electronic Arts in order to See, profit, I, which is which makes sense, you know, you don't want to go under. Instance, but let like, yeah. If you take Bioware though, I don't think they changed that much until basically the old republic. Yeah, I th- I think Bioware changed when the doctors left it because yeah they... yeah and, and that would happen yeah. if they were if they yeah. were independent studio that would happen yeah, yeah yeah I don't have anything uh, against uh, you know Bioware going to Electronic Arts I I think that Electronic Arts bought a lot of com- um, smaller companies that I think like uh, maybe they would have gone under I agree uh, the deal was made you know it was made because of financial reasons so they would probably you know had financial problems without being bought um but it's kind of like um gives the ip to electronic arts and then uh, that ip comes out with like a being transformed with electronic arts uh, vision like, and well, there's space. yeah and yeah, that space but three about... fucking sucked like <laughs> that sucked balls man but would it you rather have Dead Space 3 or not? I mean, because I never played otherwise... Dead Space 3. I don't give <laughs> yeah. a shit about this. But I played 15 minutes of Dead Space 3 and I turned it off. But I Dead never Space 2 didn't sell. So, like, in the past, there would have just it. never been a Dead Space 3. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I, I, it's... I understand. But well, it Dead makes Space me annoyed. Didn't sell either, so that can be yeah, but work. it makes me annoyed that they come out with a franchise I liked and it's now. I don't like it, you know. Yeah, it's like I, it annoys me. Yeah. Uh, it's Cause... like I eat some like a good food from a restaurant for a long time, and then I 
go out to eat you know one saturday morning and i'm like wait this food is garbage did you change the chef and they're like yep new management and i'm like well then you're going just to tease me with your with the great memories of the past what once was well like we I think wish... about like like respawn right so we Re- respawn is this new company they come out they release titanfall yeah. and it's a bomb I mean, it just, I mean, it was going to be, it was going to be the Call of Duty killer. And then it just kind of like, for whatever, even though it's a fantastic game, never sells, right? Yeah. So the original Titanfall, my understanding is the original Titanfall did okay. It was Titanfall okay. 2 that really flopped. Yeah, mm. but it, what's so weird though is Titanfall 2 is such a great game. And I mean, the, they had the budget for it and everything. So I feel like, and the fact that Respawn still exists and is getting to make a Star Wars game now. That shit never would have happened 20 years ago. After one okay game, one bomb, that studio's done, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and now now I'm getting to see Respawn take on Star Wars, which is, an e- which, which is like failing upward if you look at it from a sales perspective. But from a player's perspective, I get to see what I think is probably the coolest right now for my money, first-person shooter company working on a Star Wars game. So... I think there's a little bit of give and take there. I'm not trying to say that, you know, EA isn't... To me, they're never the most evil company in the world. Or whatever. I, I understand. I understand. I'm saying that nothing that Electronic Arts made have made me... Like, I, I didn't like any of their games. And any yeah. of their published games, any of their developed games. I just don't like it. I don't like their business practices. Yeah, I, I can get that. I can get yeah. behind that. But, I mean, as far as what their show gave me... They pretty mm-hmm. much they pretty much hit down everything I expected to. I mean, Battlefield Five looks fucking gorgeous. I, I hate that we're back in World War Two again, but um, and I know there's all this inter- internet controversy because for some damn reason there has to be. But uh, yeah, let's not. That's one of those things where I'm just like, oh god, not yeah, again. Exactly. Um, I, stop being bigoted, assholes. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm just like. Uh, the other thing that EA um, revealed is that they're sticking with Alex Hunter, our favorite yeah. FIFA character. <laughs> Madden looks good. Uh, <laughs> the new Madden looks good. And here's the thing. Here's the biggest takeaway from e- E3, or for EA E3 for me. That fucking uh, new Origin Pass is maybe the best deal in gaming right now. Uh, and I know like the, the big sexy game reveals are what usually comes out of E3, but that... Um, or what did they call Origin Access Plus, Origin Access, whatever? Um, it's what is it? A hundred bucks for every EA game that comes out that year uh, at launch with DLC included. I mean, that just seems like like a great deal if you play any E three in any sports games or anything. And then they're bringing Matt into PC. Um, I mean, to me, that's a no no brainer for me to buy. I don't know about everybody. I mean, obviously, you don't like EA mm-hmm. games, but uh, mm-hmm. the fact that you could spend a hundred bucks, get Anthem, uh, get their Star Wars game, get all their little weird indie games because they do put out a little a lot of weird indie games, Battlefield Five, and if you're into those any of those sports games, I mean, that's just. I figure if you're it's into, the deal, man. Yeah, Everybody's if you're into going sports to it. Games, then I think this is probably the deal to go for. Remember when Maxis was good? That was yeah. good times. <laughs> good I mean, times. It's, it, like, it's just a gamble I'm willing to take, but I can see what this said to me is because now Microsoft does this, EA does this. This is going to be the future pricing for video games is, yeah, you can buy our game still, but here's the oh, real I deal. Thought, I thought you were talking about... I thought you were talking about buying out smaller companies. No, no. The... <laughs> the, the, the Origin it's, Access Premier is, is <laughs> yeah. If I could buy Max, that, that was a segue. That was a segue it. opportunity. Oh, with Microsoft buying every company yeah. ever. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's talk about the Microsoft conference because, um, so two things to note about the conference for me. One, they just bought five companies because why yeah. not? Including Ninja Theory, <laughs> makers of Hellblade, and yeah. uh, Compulsion, makers of We Happy Few, and Contrast. Uh, the other thing to note is that apparently Microsoft is a weeaboo company now. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's just nothing <laughs> but... I was like, wait, is this the Sony? What? What's going on? Yeah, so no. what did they show off? They showed off Jump Force, Near Automata, Kingdom Hearts 3, Devil May Cry 5, 
<laughs> What's yeah, going on, was... man? And that uh, that Souls game. Uh... Oh yeah, Sekiro as well. Yeah. <laughs> Souls died twice. Um, I, I love that they started it with Halo just to get it out of the way. I mean, everybody and their mom knew Halo was coming. Halo Infinite sounds like it might be a little bit something. Not exactly Halo, not 100%. I don't know. They didn't show enough of it, but um, it, so it, it looks neat. It's like not a Halo 6. Is Halo well, 6 the, Halo Infinite. the way they did that reveal was really smart because I'm watching. I'm like, what the fuck game is this? You know, this looks really good. This engine looks – I mean, like the way they're doing like the – like the smoke rising in the distance and then like yeah. you're on the fire and it's like it's like the heat waves are moving i'm like this game looks great and it's mm-hmm. like oh shit is that a warthog <laughs> you yeah. know and it's like that you was know, a, a, a rem- smart remember trail. our our talk about god of war mm-hmm. uh, i'm one of the people that just like doesn't get love for halo i oh, played man. i played yeah, that, like that. I played the first one i played the third one i played the third one a fair bit like 10 hours and I was like, I don't get it at all. I just don't. I don't get it. And I kind of. I mean, I not to say like it. Maybe not everywhere, but I kind of feel like Halo is kind of like a, a weird, uniquely my age and mm. American thing. Like in some ways, it was like Halo was the first game where like you brought your consoles to your friend's house so you could play the game all night. You know, staying up, having these like you know grudge matches and stuff it's hard to explain it's kind of like it's kind of like a cultural thing in some ways so halo's always yeah that's 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 very possible because halo is completely unpopular here here. yeah and like a lot of my friends it's really it's really a north american phenomenon like i I think think so so. like a bunch of people play counter-strike here when it comes to like or quake or something like that but not not halo yeah yeah and maybe it's so community like pc communities counter-strike is like that but here it was like halo was like halo was like it was the cool thing everybody did at my age like like the, the captain of the football team played Halo, and so did the lead trumpet of the band. I mean, Halo was kind of like a cult. It was the lead trumpet of the band. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played Halo? I played Halo 1. That's the only Halo Well, game. there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, like, like how Fortnite is now was how Halo was when I was 15. It was mm-hmm. it was inescapable. It was what everybody did every weekend. It was whose house are we going to? Make sure you have all the cords. Bring your own controller. You know, um, but so I mean that's like where Halo comes from for me. But where Halo is now is I mean it's it's the space opera that I am into more than Star Wars easily. Oh. Um, you know, it's, so it's it's like the world that I I know when it comes to it, and I'm really invested in a lot of these characters. I want to know what happens now that Cortana's rampant. I want to know you know what what did what did Halsey have to do all this? It, it's it's a world I follow more than probably most other games, but. Um, yeah. So I mean I'm excited also for Halo. I'm always gonna be... also yeah. <laughs> I'm always gonna be excited for it. Um but I'm glad that they got this one out of the way because I think everyone knew they were working on it and I, they were like, Look, it's coming. That's all I need. I don't need mm. twenty minutes of Halo. Let let the it game might speak even for be itself. Next gen at this stage. Yeah. Ooh, and that's an interesting thought. And Microsoft's doing some weird stuff with next gen, and so is PlayStation Sound. Microsoft's like next gen's still gonna be an Xbox One. It's just going to be like what the X is now. Just do you know what I mean? Like, so I feel like yeah. they're they, lo- using the Xbox yeah, One X like on a it. stepping stone. Yeah, and then the one that comes out in whatever it is, 2020, is probably just an Xbox One X with better mm-hmm. specs. I mean, yeah, that's what PCs have done forever. There doesn't need to be weird chips anymore, like the cell that makes all of a sudden you shit, it can't be backwards compatible, you know? Yeah, just, just keep slap making it. Is, is just going to do going forward is they're going to kind of going to release mid-generation refreshes and then yeah. everything's just going to kind of move in in groups of two so then the past two um consoles will support everything so in this case the xbox one yeah. x and then whatever else they release next and they'll keep staggering these releases yeah yeah that's, 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 a, really smart. that's a good thing about yeah but because back 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 uh yeah the compatibility thing you know like yeah uh, that's important so i think that will work on the next generation consoles I mean, yeah, cool. it, this I might hope be enough to draw me into too. the Xbox ecosystem eventually, um, because as much yeah. as I love the, the games that end up on Sony's consoles, I do kind of find a lot of the stuff around it irritating. So if Microsoft is is finally getting in on on the weeds, 
then. Hmm. I, I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that a lot. You know, I've been. I've I've got them all at this point, but I've always been kind of leaning more towards Microsoft because I feel like they this gen, <laughs> they're not the leaders, so they've been more <laughs> consumer friendly, like how Sony was. The mm-hmm. previous, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I mean, right now, if you're a PC gamer, it, it only makes sense for you to at least with play anywhere with Game Pass. With I mean, the fact that everything they're doing, crossplay, backwards compatibility, everything is what people said they wanted when it came to being consumer friendly, right? Yeah. Except mm-hmm. then they're still out there buying PlayStation 4s that do the exact fucking opposite that are like, yeah, you have backwards compatibility, but it's this weird streaming service that doesn't quite... I've, I've done a lot of, uh, what is it, PS Now. It's never... Like, I just let me download the game, man. You know? And then... No, but... well, some people say that in, like, two generations, that's how we're going to play games yeah but we're not there now i mean even with an ultra fast internet when i do ps now it's annoying i mean Mm -hmm. i tried shit what was it It wasn't heavy rain it was the one fahrenheit no 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 the one between heavy rain yes beyond two souls oh okay like that game i know it's pretty high graphic fidelity and stuff but holy crap man i was getting so annoyed with the buffering and the little frame drops and stuff and you know you notice it but um so, you know, back to you saying, thinking about the Microsoft ecosystem, I think that's a really good place to be right now. Um, if you're, if you've got a gaming PC and an Xbox console, um, you know, I've ranted and raved enough about it. I'm hoping people are, and it does seem like people are starting to catch on, like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is actually really cool that I can play Fortnite uh, uh, on Microsoft and Switch together or Minecraft across different consoles and a, a world yeah. that, like, for some reason. It's weird that Nintendo's playing that. Yeah, yeah, and they don't have to because Nintendo's its own world. Um, you know, so very much its own world, more so than Sony. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so good on that. Um, so what else? What, what else did you guys think about what was what was announced at the conference? At Microsoft. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like we can talk about almost all the big third parties announced at Microsoft. I thought that was kind of weird, first of all. Like, just talking about the conference in general, uh, we saw Devil May Cry 5. Yeah. Weirdly. Shadow we saw of the Tomb Raider, The Division 2. Just Cause, Cyberpunk. I mean, like, all these, like, big, all the big third party games for some reason announced at Microsoft, which is interesting. Um, but speaking of Microsoft specific stuff, Forza looks gorgeous. I could not take my eyes off that trailer. Um, I'm not. I'll never play. I don't like racing games, but what a fucking good looking game that one was. Um, I guess driving around England and stuff. Ori looks good, um, but like a, a lot of the exclusives just looked really good. Um, so I, I'm interested to see how they actually play. But uh, I, I was I was actually really pleasantly surprised at how those games looked. Yeah. I've... A lot of things that. Oh yeah, the other thing, Tales of Vesperia was uh, yeah. a remake was announced there. Well, like that's t- the Tale series, pretty much as weeaboo as you can get in the JRPG space without getting into like uh, Sun and Co- Sun and is more like Ballers, um, without getting into like uh, Neptunia games. So to have that at a Microsoft conference is just really fucking weird. I don't understand you. the word, word weeaboo, but uh, <laughs> it, there were uh, plenty like, uh, of Japanese games. It's a Japanese fan, yeah, fan yeah, of it's Japanese like, culture. It's like, but they were games. just Japanese games for me. Like they were, you know, like uh, yeah, it's Japanese developers, not fun. Like yeah. they pro- probably, probably, you know, in the competition with Sony for that stuff. Here's here's what I'll say. This is gonna sound kind of like me being contrarian, but honest to God, the game I was probably most excited about was kind of used to troll people, and that's the XCOM Gears of War game. Um, oh, I'm actually oh, yeah. really interested in that. And people like they basically just used that to troll. Like they weren't gonna announce a new Gears game. Everybody knew they were gonna. Um, but yeah, I was like, whoa, an XCOM Gears. That that's a cool little mashup. Is cause... that the one with like the Funko looking characters? No, 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 no. That's a that's a mobile game. They announced that, and then they announced basically it, it's it's like a tactics top down tactics tactics yeah. game in the Gears of War universe. And they. They announced it right next, like after they set up, uh, announced the Funko Pop game. I thought that was the Funko Pop game because I didn't see the transition into yeah. the uh, 
that, and I was like, wait, did that Funko on Pop Tactics? What the fuck is going on? Yeah, they did that on purpose. They kind of blurred it, and then they were like, oh, yeah, and also Gears 5 is coming out, like, to kind of get the crowd hyped, but... Okay, uh, so there are, like, three Gears games, because I, I didn't follow games, that yes. at all. I thought there were two. Yeah. I thought there was, like, a, there's a three. There's a Funko, Funko game, and then there's... Yeah. There's uh, a Funko Mobile game, then there's a Gears Tactics, which... Gears is a cover shooter anyway, right? Yeah, so yeah, all yeah. you're really doing is taking that world bringing back the camera and that's going to be a really natural fit i think people kind of slept on that one uh because they were more excited for the gears 5 but i was like wow that looks really cool i wanted to see more and they're like oh gears 5 i was like yeah gears i don't know i i, I don't mind gears but it's definitely a world that it's kind of its own thing right now um they announced battle toads uh um <laughs> 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 battle fucking toads yeah cuphead's getting an expansion trying to, i mean yeah Basically everything I saw at the Microsoft was this was this was to me the show of E3. It, yeah, in a Microsoft way. was. I think they, the they announced a ton of third party stuff. They had all the the enough exclusives there to keep me interested, um, and the stuff they talked about, like the way they're doing Game Pass and things like that. I mean, it was all very positive. Big um, improvement over five years ago. Let's put it that yeah. way. This was the show that Sony had the year that Microsoft announced the yeah, xbox one that was disastrous right yeah. like um yeah i mean the, the buying the studios i don't want to just gloss over that either because i think they were some pretty smart purchases um of studios digit theory is a big one i mean it looked like they were going to be a ps exclusive studio for a little bit right weren't they mm -hmm. having forward a lot of stuff out the gate um so that's kind of surprising um uh, yeah yeah a little bit yeah but so now their games i mean the flip side of this is after they released their their current games that they're working on uh, the future games will just be windows and xbox exclusives yeah which I which mean, i don't I mean, mind because yeah you can't, it's gamer. hard to call it an, right it's hard to call it an exclusive if you can play it on pc and xbox you know yeah it's, yeah uh i mean as long as they keep releasing them on pc i'm, I'm happy if it's moved which to is, exclusively xbox you know, that's isn't good. it kind of a weird place that microsoft ended up on like uh, like we ended up in like they have no exclusives because everything they put out they also put out on pc yeah but it's kind of weird but they're also the only people who makes windows so you know, i mean either way yeah getting, yeah you know, but mean, like, you know a day, bunch of... they just yeah. like if um the, they're still getting a cut anyway right, right. So, yeah it, especially it, if you buy it through the microsoft store but I don't, I don't know how much they. Um, interesting, is it? Like, I think some of the games that are on Microsoft Store end up on Steam sooner or later. Though. Yeah, you know, here's the like thing, though. Break, right? Was I think we're all so used to like the corporate speak, like the <laughs> oh, I just want you to play games wherever you want because games are great. We want you to enjoy games. We've all kind of just said, yeah, right. You want us to play your game on your system. But what I think is gonna happen, I think Microsoft kind of doesn't give a shit. I really do. Like, I think they don't. I think if they said, "Yeah, we're you know, we'll put Halo on PlayStation Four if you guys want. If you're gonna buy it, who cares? You know." But no, yeah, they, I, really I don't do that. But it's, it's I don't know. But I mean, like, if, if I don't think Microsoft cares enough right now about exclusives like that, they're gonna fight for them. I yeah, think it doesn't company, sound like it. Yeah. If a company's like, "Yeah, we want to make this game for everybody," they're like, "Cool. Can we just at least do crossplay?" And mm -hmm. most of the companies are like, "Yeah, sure. PC and Xbox, and yeah. that way people are." Because that when you it, you you're chasing market share, right? So yeah. if I want to play uh, Division Two on PC and you want to play it on Xbox and we can crossplay, well, we're both playing together, but we're building the Xbox community. Do you know what I mean? We're building the the people who the number of people who can play on it. So I kind of think that's how they're going after market share in a way, and then they're hoping that people stick with it through generational changes because Xbox One X is the best console right now, right? I mean, I don't, I don't even think. Sony. I mean, the most powerful. Best. Yeah, as far as you know, cutting edge and stuff. Um, so you're in that weird half gap console thing where, well, that's the best console. It's got the best services. Is it like a soft reboot for the generation? I don't know. I mean, probably not. I don't think consoles are flying off the shelves, but I mean, um, I, like, let me put it this way: the consoles for them are a loss leader, right? They're not making profit off off the actual hardware sales. What they make profit are is what is selling games and at that point they don't care whether there's once you've bought the console they don't care whether they're selling the copy to your xbox or to your pc it's the same money either way yeah so, it's like, like the opposite of the nintendo model yeah. right <laughs> right 
then again, Nintendo doesn't op doesn't own the biggest operating system in the world, so it really has right, yeah, series. has a backup. <laughs> Same as Sony, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, Microsoft can leverage their other businesses to help them in this regard. Uh, but but I also think that like uh, having just one system that you're selling games on uh, helps developers develop games for it. You know, it's harder yeah. to port something to like working on two systems at once is harder than just like oh we're putting it out on Xbox and it will work best there because we know the system and yeah. you know not like fifty thousand uh, graphic cards or shit. So. You know, it, it, games designed especially for just one console and one console only, like work very well usually. Or, yeah, there's there's a lot of truth to that. It yeah, really there's is. yeah. So it's interesting the way they're going about games right now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to mention about Microsoft before we move on to Bethesda? Ah, thought it was um, a good one. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about games later, but yeah. we can move okay. on to Bethesda. So yeah. Bethesda, um, this was basically the fallout conference i guess i mean they announced yeah. a bunch of stuff before yeah. they announced uh rage 2 which had been leaked previously uh they talked about prey dlc they announced a new doom and announced a new wolfenstein right um they announced a bunch of shit they announced everything every yeah IP it was they literally have. every yes exactly, exactly right. that, you think about the ip Beth bethesda has they announced that shit on that fucking and then, uh, and then one new one and then yeah new one. Which yeah, and we're making new gen. shit. Yeah, and I'm like, God, and then like, the the funny part was like, oh, we're developing uh this thing on the next generation, and after that, we are even develop. And I'm like, what's after that? You can't I mean, just tell me. <laughs> it, it was weird to me that they led the show with Rage Two because I don't, I don't know who anybody the first who... Rage, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was like a really weird. Okay, yeah, you're making it look like Borderlands and a lot of other stuff, but it just was weird to me. So you went, where did it go? It went Rage, Doom, Wolfenstein? Then, yeah, some, well, there's Prey DLC somewhere in the middle. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was like, okay, so you know, you're kind of hitting on all this, these shooters, and it's like everybody's there for kind of the other game. You know what I mean? But it, it was weird to me that they led, they really went shooter heavy at the beginning and kind of like those worlds that are kind of, I don't know, like, I guess everybody has a different idea of what Bethesda is in their head, but to me, it's not those three games. You know, it's like, okay, where's the Fallout? Where's the Elder Scrolls? Where's the, you know the, all the, the RPGs? But then I got it at I, the end, so I was happy. But I, at me, first, I was for like, for me, it is those three games because I was never really? really into. The, uh, the, I like Doom, Bethesda yeah, RPGs. So. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like the back half of the presentation where it's just Fallout, uh, I was tuning out. Like, yeah, me too. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't give a shit about that. I had yeah. the exact opposite. <laughs> well, there you like... go. So it was a conference for everyone. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think we can all agree, best. though, that Andrew WK kind of flopped. Well, he went on too <laughs> long. He should have just did the, the catchy chorus a couple times. But this, you know, it was like his song, but they wrote it as, like, he's like a party guy, and Get Ready to Die isn't really his vibe. So you know I, what I mean? Like, It was a very weird part of the conference. Yeah. And I think it was weird because uh, the trailer leaked before, yes, uh, yes. so they had to do something. And they were like, oh, can, you, can you sing a song? Yeah, I can sing a song. And he could. Yeah. Yeah, I, just that it was weird that nobody in the audience was responding to this in any way. <laughs> I, I honestly, just I honestly think that pre-leak, this was how they were going to close the show. Uh, was was this announcement, this surprise out of nowhere, Rage Two announcement with Andrew WK singing, and then it go fades to black. But they they said something like, "Thanks to our friends at Walmart Canada," uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. And um, just I, gonna say. Todd Howard was like on fire. This yeah, he was. he was. He was. He got me so. Oh man, we got to talk Fallout seventy six, right? Um, sure. I'm seeing a lot of like the internet is a fickle mistress, right? Um, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of wants to play Fallout with friends, and then you give them Fallout with friends, and they're like, "Fuck you, I didn't want that." Right? I, I feel like I mean, I've I feel like I've been taking crazy pills. Like this is what everybody wanted forever, right? Why can't I have multiplayer Fallout? And then they're like, "Guess what? Multiplayer. We don't want this. This isn't my Fallout." And all that not my Fallout shit. But you know what? Just like hashtagging not my Fallout. Yes. You know <laughs> not my Fallout. Okay, was, that's, not my Fallout. That's was Fallout garbage. Three. That's you garbage. know, like not Fallout Three wasn't my Fallout. Okay. 
and I oh, loved dude. Fallout Three. And like, uh, it is so crazy to me. You know what? You, you know what happened? Like people, I think. You know what this is like? This is like when people hashtag not my Christian when they recast the main character in Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not my fault. Wait, that. it is your fallout. It's just um, every, everything. You know, I think they've... like I think like two pe- two different people have do- two different experiences with Fallout. So one group of people really want that uh, open ended multiplayer experience that they can like kind of do quest and shit with, but not like two story heavy. And then, then their second group that wants to immerse themselves in this lonely world where they really yeah, get into the story. Fair. That's well, fair. if yeah. what they said, yeah, so if what they said, that's true. not one person. Okay. Yeah, if, if what they said is true, you can have both, right? You can still have guess, a yeah. lonely yeah. ass single player. I mean, you can still play Fallout 4, goddammit. You don't yeah. have to play every <laughs> game Bethesda comes out with. It, it was frustrating to me to see the reaction because I came out of that trailer hyped. When they were talking about nukes and, like, when he talked about softcore, softcore survival, it made so – like, the way he described it made it – Todd Howard has a way of describing a game's mm-hmm. vision. Mm, Softcore survival. <laughs> you're, you're, you're speaking my language now, Todd. You're making me hot and you know very bothered here. Mm. But it, it's very not that bothered. kind of like okay. it's not that kind keep of keep talking, game. Todd. Keep talking. <laughs> it's not that kind of rust game where you die and you lose everything, your house, everything you work for. No, it's like okay, you died. It's not a reset for your character. It's not a great thing that you died, but it's not like you're starting back from scratch. And I was like, that's what I wanted to hear. Huge map, multiplayer. Um, the setting as a as a Fallout fan is really cool to me. This is right after the bombs fell, pretty much. You know, yeah. This is how people um, live into the first Fallout, I think. And when, I, I think in like a later interview, he started talking about like you know, if you nuke your friend's settlements, it's cool. You've you've basically made them move. But what happens now is that area that you nuked is now full of high-level creatures that you've got to deal with. They've become your problem, you know. So yeah. it sounds like they're really leaning in on kind of like like kind of the the organic stuff that people love about kind of survival games. Um, I think that's that's a really cool potential for Fallout. I, I was so hyped for this. I was, and then like it's and then you read the internet and you're just like, fuck this, never mind. You know, everybody hates everything. Um, I mean, the internet is just such bull and negative. Everybody hates everything and everyone loves everything too much. So I, it's like si- two sides of one coin, I think. Since Fallout Three, people have wanted multiplayer Fallout, right? I'm not, I'm not making Some that people. up. Like, I, yeah. that's what the I, internet I don't think is, you know. Has one. Like. Ten yeah. percent of people are screaming really loudly, and that's the thing you are looking for, looking yeah. at, right? And yeah. it uh, one time it's ten percent of people that say, "Ah, oh, we want multiplayer Fallout," and in the other time it's the other ten percent of people that says, "Ah, oh, multiplayer Fallout is garbage." Yeah. So you know, you get internet is angry all the time, twenty four seven. You made a great point. I mean, there's Fallout Four still exists. Fallout New Vegas yeah. still exists. There's a million yeah. mods for it. You can do whatever you want with it. If you want to have that solo adventure loaded up you know but i i don't i i I said this i think on every e3 podcast we've done where i don't mind developers taking a chance i i just don't like i can't hate them for for trying new stuff and just not making i i know what fallout fallout 5 would have been right it would have been set somewhere interesting it would have had a lot of quests a lot of factions romances the probably settlement building maybe one or two but this feels like something totally different and and i'm okay with that and i um, i'll give it a shot you know yeah I, I can see that so the other thing i just wanted to, to discuss briefly from the conference is what do you make of the elder scrolls going mobile uh, uh I, I'm, I, I'm not a big mobile player okay. uh i won't I be play, playing the game probably i play legends on my phone and um uh, uh bethesda gets mobile i mean they, sure. they do they, they they know what they're doing with it. Uh, Legends is probably one of the most fun mobile games I play, and it's even actually a little bit better I think than Hearthstone, which is kind of a similar you mm-hmm. know uh, mm-hmm. card game. So I like what I play, and I I have confidence they can make it work. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it just it just feels like Blades has I don't know unless they tie it into the Elder Scrolls and like lore or canon, I probably won't try it out. Um, but I like the idea of a procedurally generated dungeon sim on my phone not necessarily an Elder Scrolls one, but um, it sounds cool. And I guess you can visit your your friends and stuff like that, and there's some kind of multiplayer yeah. to it, but I, I don't know if I'll ever, ever in my life, like maybe a generational thing, gets excited about a mobile game. It just yeah, always feels like... Not me a, either. I'm just 
curious. If it it does look it. very pretty though. Yeah, it does. Game. It looks good. Um, which is uh, another thing. Like it will probably drain batteries like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, play yeah. play plugged in. That's yeah, sure. exactly. And your phone will get super hot. And so. um, Starfield looks cool. I, I think we've known I about Starfield I'm... forever though, right? I don't. Like, I'm not sure how it looks like. I all I saw is space. <laughs> looks looked fine. I have confidence that it'll be interesting. But yeah. I also think it's too far away for us to yeah. comment on. Yeah. No, no yeah. way to. He definitely said about. next gen. So I mean. Yeah. yeah, and then he said after that, which I was like had a crisis of 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 my life. Like, oh my god, not, next gen is not even here, and he's talking about something beyond that. Yeah. yeah. But he says it's running now. Video games will be yeah. playing when you're fifty. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, and then um, Elder Scrolls Six teaser to close it, right? Yeah. Um, which man, I know like the internet's kind of saying it's High Rock, right? I think I, so. Yeah, the, the Dwarven Kingdom. I, I yeah. have known Elder Scrolls detractor, so I'm just gonna yeah. out of this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean High Rock or Hammerfell. I'm guessing it's gonna be High Rock and Hammerfell. Um, yeah, probably. It's, it's because. Both of those are those are pretty small regions, so I think yeah. they'll combine into one big one. And it's an interesting place to move the series, I think, because that's kind of where the war, the the grand story is taking us. Um, right. So I, I think that's a that's a smart setting, and I think it's what most people want. And you get Daggerfall Daggerfall back. Yeah, um, I, honestly, I thought uh, Skyrim setting was boring. Yeah, um, I preferred I preferred Oblivion to this when it comes to setting. And you're definitely getting back towards Oblivion with with Hammerfell and Hyrule. Yeah, that's, that's a lot what of the I, old areas that are. I'd like way... to see them do something like bizarre and tropical. Okay, like okay, Merv. Okay, <laughs> you might Kill get it. it. <laughs> it depends on how big. I mean. The, the trend in games is always to go bigger, right? So there's no way... High, High Rock is probably the smallest province in Tamriel. Oh, yeah. So so I feel like it's going to be at least Hammerfall and High Rock and maybe elsewhere, I think, is the other rumor, um, uh, which I would mean, get you the jungles and the Let's the be craziness. honest, we, we won't get anything new and exciting, Merv. I think <laughs> I, I, it will be a gosh darn Elder Scrolls game, and that's that. Uh, like there may be some interesting things in it and new improvements, but it's still going to be a junky ass big world with a lots of quirky physics and uh, mostly Backwards boring quests. Yeah, yeah, and mostly yeah. boring quests because that's what Bethesda does. Yeah, that's yeah, fair. that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I know the Elder Scrolls games aren't for me, but I'd like other people to have I more know. varied experiences if they want them. I know. But I don't know. People are just like, throw me in another evergreen forest. Uh, I did like uh, I did like Fallout New Vegas. That's my favorite uh, Bethesda game. game. <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> All right. But uh, it was. I think that was a really good day of shows, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Microsoft and Bethesda. I think that was kind of like a, a very good start, but it was a very hard. It was, it was a weird bar to set for everyone else to follow. Um, and, because uh, it never hit that peak for me let's, again. Let's transition maybe to the end of the day. Oh, the yeah, whole the I don't even want to talk about this fucking <laughs> troll. So, okay, I, I'm going to say this right away. I think this is a... I did not like what Devolver did last year. I like yeah. I liked this a lot better. Because last year, I think they were... Um, I think they just tried uh, to drown in irony so was, last time. Yeah. It's been yeah, I felt it. This time, I it felt what whatever they were mocking felt like it was actually worthy of mockery, like the loot box controversy and now cryptocurrency and all that nonsense. Whatever they I were mocking think... felt like it was a worthy target. Yeah, me. yeah, but I don't think I just like their style of humor. I I just can't get yeah. through their conferences. I know, I, like I I feel like for some reason this is the conference the internet loves, uh, and. You know, when I say the internet, like just basically people's reactions stuff. They want this craziness, this zaniness, but then they show these games, and you're like, what the fuck? Like, don't even have a conference. It's I don't know. Like, it's not. A real I know they're just goofing. This they're just goofing. goofing. They get the, it's, they yeah. get the clips, but like they get the hits. They yeah. know what they're pulling off. Um, yeah, I it's not say... even a conference, really. It's just like ah, here we have a couple of games that we can show off, and that's it. Yeah, that, and that's what Pedro I would say. Looks... To me, it's not a real. Yeah. It's not a real conference. You don't show three indie games and then a bunch of skits, and that's your yeah. that's your yeah uh, yeah. That, that's the Volver, though. Well, you can't. Have, I will say like, there's nothing more. My friend Pedro is not a game that I would like to play, but it does look super cool. So it yeah, looks, it's very it looks stylish. Kind of, yeah, it looks stylish. It looks yeah. weird. I'm not quite sure how you control it even. 
Um, but it looks, it looks fine. No, no, yeah. No. Um, that's the next gen way. That's the first next gen indie game. And then Metal Wolf Chaos was exactly the kind of game I thought Devolver would put out. Sure. You know, sure. sure. It's look at it. It's zany. The president's in a mech. You know, but I mean, that's I a I'm remake of, of an old game, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got yeah, yeah I, I've got too many good games to play to play troll <laughs> games. I mean, that's how I feel. Nice. You know, <laughs> that's fair. I sorry, sorry, Devolver. I have too many good games to play. <laughs> oh wow. I don't think I've actually played a Devolver Digital published game before. Um, uh, it's just I, I, not really I, my thing. Uh, anyway, let's move on to Square Enix. Ugh. Ooh, that's Crush Fire. <laughs> really? <laughs> nah, it wasn't that bad. It was okay. kind of meandering and, and kind of slow paced. It was See, weird. Well, we, well, we it's talked a half earlier. Hour conference, though. It wasn't. Yeah. They didn't yeah. say they're welcome. Yeah. And, and when we talked earlier, like when I was saying that, I was surprised that Microsoft got so many third parties. It feels like most of them were Square Enix ones, right? I was like, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, they got, they got, yeah, was, you know, they got Just Cause 4. Um, I think it was even at their conference they announced, was it at their conference they announced Captain Spirit? I yeah, Microsoft so. had Captain Spirit. Oh, yeah, wait sure. so, wait a second. I No, slow pace. The Sony was slow pace. The Square Enix was very quick, right? Yeah, Square I, Enix was over yeah. half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Went, it was snap, quick. Snap, snap. The only Captain really... Spirit was... Microsoft's Shadow of the Tomb Raider was Microsoft. Yeah. I think the only game they announced was Babylon's Fall, and which the is Quiet Man. Yes. Uh, the, yes. Quiet, the Quiet Man. That's yeah. A, yeah. Like the stupidest name and the weirdest looking game I've ever saw. Like <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, and, and then they just ended it. Like the, the it yeah, just no. ended after that, and everyone's like, "The fuck? Where's all the what games?" What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's a weird and thing about I, the Quiet Man. I I watched all these conferences. I didn't even remember that they announced that until I was looking at the recap. Yeah, yeah. I did remember I Babylon's remembered Fall it because, because people were people were laughing at the title, and I was like, "Yeah, that that game did exist." You know what? I also what I, I, I when I was watching Square Enix, I thought like, "God damn, this is the second time they showed Kingdom Hearts, and it's almost the same fucking trailer." It was literally almost the same trailer, and, and I, it, I don't know. It if even I'm had the same or... weird audio bug that you didn't, <laughs> couldn't hear, hear like some of the sound effects i was like what's up with that yeah that was that was bizarre wait so the microsoft one was the frozen one this was yeah. the captain jack sparrow one right yep. no yep. The, the but then, it, no, then yeah. it goes right into the frozen stuff like you see yeah captain yeah, yeah. On a oh, ship okay. and then right wait, no, into the was, the... no sony sony was the captain jack sparrow oh, one. oh okay yeah, where yeah, Enix I'm, had the very same together. fucking exact trailer <laughs> it was the same fucking trailer how do you know that um yeah, so the only thing that really excited me out of this um, was Babylon's Fall, but that's because I really like Nier Automata. But yeah. I don't know cool. how much... Um, like, I'm playing through Bayonetta right now, and I don't like it very much. So oh, it, if it's one? more Automata, then I'm on board. If it's more Bayonetta, then I think I'm Are you playing that. the first Bayonetta? Yeah, I play the first Bayonetta. I don't like it very okay. much. Okay. The that's second right. one is a little bit better, but if I you don't like the style of it, you won't like the Yeah, it's very... Uh, it's, it's either you're in that style or you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just not really on board with it. But anyway, okay. not not important for for Square Enix. So yeah. I mean, it wasn't like objectively, if you take it in isolation, I don't think it was a bad conference. It's just they're covering previously trodden ground, right? And it it did them no favors. Um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, I watched all these conferences after the fact because I was traveling during the E3 press conferences. So I didn't really get the real-time reactions that a lot of people are getting, and I'm only sort of discovering how people receive these conferences uh, ex post. Sure. So it's 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 strange to, to see how people are responding to certain things, things I thought people would really respond to very well. Like, I didn't know people thought The Quiet Man was a joke. Um, it was weird. People yeah. were laughing because it was a kind of a weird FMV mashup with, like... yeah people turning into computer graphics suddenly and it was also a ridiculous title yeah. so yeah I, I thought people would be like oh that looks kind of neat it's like quantum break but apparently not um, no. no okay so now let's talk about ubisoft yes. which ubisoft. probably has a little bit more to chat about than uh square enix <laughs> yeah probably yeah it's probably my favorite conference in like outside of the conference when it comes to like yeah when it comes to feeling like a, a presentation because yeah they toned out on the super crazy but there's it still was interesting crazy so you know, i like it kind of has found their their spot yeah. right now right right yeah. they're they're going to be weird they're going to be 
euro. No offense. You know what I mean? They're gonna yeah, have yeah, no, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what bit, I mean? Yeah. They're not gonna be. They're not gonna be like you know, like when the Japanese devs come out, they're very like, yeah. we hope you love our game. We yeah. we put a lot of work into it. We're really proud of it. And the Americans kind of like split the difference. And then the Euro publishers usually like go crazy. I yeah. think Ubi's found their niche, and that's a good thing to find. Um, we do and, like to go crazy. You know? Yeah. And to start it out with, like, that weird Just Dance thing, oh, yeah. perfect. You know what I mean? Just, I just go it. with it. I love that they didn't fucking say anything about the game, but that's yep. just, like, the songs they played. Oh, yeah, those are going to be in the fucking game. Of course, yep. yes. So it, it was it. perfect. It was yeah. perfect. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil, there's there's two or three games out of E3. Like I said with Anthem, I'm going to say with Beyond Good and Evil, and I'll probably say the same thing for Death Stranding. I gotta see what this game even is before I can get hyped for it because I didn't understand how this I, is even beyond. Good and evil. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a gameplay thing that was shown somewhere. Yeah, that's yeah. Like they, they are showing like the scope of the world that you can like go uh, into the world, into one town, and go yeah. uh, into the space. You know, outside of the space, like. It looks kind of interesting, but I'm still not I just sold. I don't know on. if it's what I'm looking for out of the Beyond Good and Evil game. Yeah, and and then um, they and this hit record thing on top of it was like, what the fuck is this? Is this like a? <laughs> it it sounded like more like you're developing a game than you're playing. Um, just they're, they're soliciting. Yeah, they did it before. In the game. Yeah, yeah, but they did it before, and they they always are sponsoring people, uh, giving money to people that are you know working for the yeah, game that yeah. way so it's not as weird as it came off during the conference it's actually more like oh you just submit your work and we're going to pay you for it so, yeah 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 i don't know it looks uh, interesting uh beyond beyond good and evil one it was like it also had like this real world elements that it didn't exactly need to be there like there was a lot of like spaces that you could like travel and there wasn't anything to do there so i get i have a sense that they wanted to do this kind of thing for a long time and then beyond good and evil one you also like you know uh, travel to the moon spoilers for beyond good <laughs> and evil one but i i have a, i had a sense that they wanted to try something like this for a long time yeah like kind of like a like a quirky space yeah. type thing like um what was that and one with the scale anime? like yeah, um, Cowboy one? Bebop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. That's exactly yeah. what I got from it. Yeah, bounty hunters and kind of like pirates in space. And um, I also like, yeah, I I really did see even playing the first game that they wanted to make it like a bigger scope. Like they wanted really to have more cities, maybe, or like have more space travel. That's what I thought when I was playing that game. That oh, I'm it sure was that like game a... has a wackadoodle of cut content. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. that's why I'm saying I need to see what happens. Uh, I mean, yeah, just... yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, we'll see. So what we'll else see. they got there at the conference? <laughs> the Division 2, they showed that uh, off. Yeah, um, that looks I boring. Uh, uh, the pirate game, is it a, it's a MOBA, right? It's in, what, what, in, sort in of? Which one? The, the, the Skull, Skull and Bones, Bones kind of thing? Yeah. No, I, I think it's not a MOBA. It's I think it's just kind of like a weird multiplayer game just yeah, that i was i was getting moba vibes from it in that your ship is your hero do you know I, what i mean I, yeah but there are no lanes or anything like that I yeah think. yeah yeah but i mean it just seems weird to me that like like how could they balance this game with all the shit they were talking about i mean like wouldn't everybody just get the biggest ship with the most guns i don't understand yeah, i mean well, yeah it'd be sl slow but uh, it seems like that one ship was unsinkable that they showed and like yeah, why doesn't everybody have that ship? <laughs> Man, so. I think that one, maybe uh, the unsinkable ship will be like an enemy ship, and then maybe. the rest will be multiplayer people. So the big, big ships, big ass ships will be enemies, and then you will have like uh, very temporary, uh, you know, uh, uh, allies that with other players that will probably uh you know we will betray each other once yeah that's loose. what i was gonna say that it, yeah. it feels like they took the dark zone from the division yeah and put yeah, it yeah, in yeah. a pirate game right like yeah. yeah you guys can work together and get this treasure but i so think basically the division meets sea of thieves yes yes and sea of thieves or was by, when Assassin's we get into creed pirate flag or whatever <laughs> when we flag, get into flag. black flag yeah yeah biggest disappointments of 2018 let me tell you sea of thieves number one but um <laughs> This, yeah, there's potential here for like 
it's like a, a really cool game, but it feels like what they've shown me so far is a really cool game mode. But mm-hmm. I'm not paying 60 bucks for the Dark Zone uh, from Division, but in a pirate ship. They, uh, and you don't... I bet there's more to that game. I hope right so. Now, I think it's pretty early to say anything. Well, this was announced last year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They, they really um, got to gotta clarify what this game's all about, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, we had that weird VR game with Elijah Wood. Transference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I, I yeah. kind of feel like by the time this game comes out, VR will be completely dead, but okay. <laughs> yeah, keep working on it, I guess. Yeah, hopefully not. I, I, I like the idea of... It's just yeah, too small I a think niche, so. I think, to sustain it. Yeah, yeah, because it's expensive hobby with, like, it, that's a niche. That's like... I don't think like we're going anywhere with VR at this point. Spinning There's a lot of uh, Nintendo partnership stuff. I yeah, remember that. So they, they had Mario Rabbids DLC. And um, so I kept thinking, like it was announced last year, Starlink looked like a Star Fox ripoff. And they just straight up and went and put Fox McCloud in the game. Yeah, yeah, so, I thought that was neat. Good for them. They, they, they got to sell those Ooh. toys. I mean, that's a weird system anyway. Um and then we had For Honor, which I might actually get back into. I really like the idea of the game. And now that they're adding uh, basically a horde mode to it rather than it all being versus, I'm excited for that. Mm-hmm. And then Odyssey's the game I've always wanted. So, I'm just going to okay. be honest with you guys. What do you make of, <laughs> of Assassin's Creed essentially turning into a Bioware game? Good. Good. <laughs> I, felt, I felt like Origin was a half step. And we talked a lot about how much I loved Origin. I, don't, I didn't made no qualms about it. Yeah, me liking that it was going more RPG. So now that it's full on RPG, it's perfect. I mean, it's a historical RPG at this point, which is what I wanted. Um, there's numbers, there's gear, there's it, there's skill trees. I mean, you can't say it's not an RPG at this point. But um, yeah, I, I think from the very first Assassin's Creed, you could not say it's not an RPG. There was yeah, a lot of RPG. But, but when you could fight the biggest boss in the game by pushing Y once from uh, you know a bale of yeah. hay, it kind of took a lot out of it. But um yeah I, assassin's creed is is like i would love for there to be a book about like how this series has kind of gone right because the first one felt like a tech demo you yeah. know like and then, and then now it's like this like you know basically creating its own genre i don't know if his, like historical rpgs like in game dev tycoon seem like a, a surefire hit but I, I don't know any other games that are doing this and it seems like a, such a no-brainer but they do it so well that I think a lot of people are like, well, we're not even going to mess with this because this is Assassin's Creed world now. Um, Origins had so many little cool features and was such a big break in where we had been and where we had been going rather than, you know, forest gumping history. Um, now it feels like they want to tell these specific stories in, in RPG ways using RPG languages and game systems. Um, fuck, I'm all, I'm all in, man. I Honestly, mean, I think... From my perspective, um, when I look at Ubisoft and where it went kind of too much in the direction that I didn't really like, like too many shit on map icons and and like little garbage things to do, like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed are two main antagonists here. Like yeah. they really did yeah. go too far at one point in that direction. Now they're scaling down a little bit and that's what I like to see. Uh, my favorite one was Black Flag, um, but it still like overwhelmed me with the shit you could do. I, I got tired of that of that franchise after that one. Yeah, um, we'll see where we go from there. I'm not t- completely <laughs> off. Like I, I don't. I'm like, not. Yeah. The so-called I know the the term that the AV Club likes is so-called map games, and mm-hmm. with these kinds of games, I think you can you can pull them off, but the content that's on the map has to be meaningful. I think adding more rpg type systems to the game makes that it yeah it gives it a better chance of being meaningful content yeah yeah, yeah I do you remember... hopefully i will enjoy that one because i uh... like like so probably the biggest map game i can think of was arkham city what was the last oh one? jesus arkham yeah knight. arkham knight night yeah and i was like okay I fuck this like that you, i would pull up the map and i'm like nah not even i'm not nah, even gonna do 90 percent of this even shit. in city you know i the like problem was, that game oh, is, though you have to do 90% of the shit to see the credits. Or you don't even see, like, certain villains don't even come up if you don't yeah. do certain things. It's ridiculous. Garbage. And so so I, I kind of feel like everybody was going in that direction. Where Like, the first where Arkham oh. Asylum kind of had some of it. 
and I, then there the was first Asylum, uh, Arkham Asylum, had the perfect balance, I yep. think. I mean, and then the second the one, they just went a little bit overboard. I'm like, I ain't doing this shit. I'm looking it up on YouTube, motherfuckers. <laughs> And then the third one was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, it, it, it literally overwhelmed me. I was like, nope, I'm not doing all this shit. Like, and, and usually I used to be the guy who did all that shit, you know? And then so when I got into Syndicate and Unity, I was like, another fucking one of these games, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. it was so refreshing to start up Origins. And, like, yeah, there's stuff on there to do, but there's not the collect 500 feathers and oh, do God, this and do that. You. Like, there, there's not because all that that's... stuff anymore. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. The um, Unity and Syndicate were the games that really burned me out on uh, Assassin's Creed. I couldn't give a shit because there's so much crap on map that I don't want to even engage with because most of it is like collecting things. Yeah, and I'm and... not. I just that's not a game at some point for me. It's like a Skinner box. Like, yeah. oh, you you get something, uh, sound effect plays, and blink, you get to go to the next one and i'm like what the fuck am i doing with my life this is like taking forever and i have shit to do and other games to play yeah yeah at I... point, it's just not fun and that's when i like i only do as much side content as i need to do in order to you know be able to level up enough that's my yeah. philosophy nowadays um anything else you guys want to talk about with regards to ubisoft nope all right nope. I, I... I what? think it's cool that they figured out how to finally animate a female character and not have it take up too much space, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're giving you gender <laughs> options now and everything. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, and romance. So it really is just straight up a Bioware game as yeah. a historical yeah. RPG. So good on you, Ubisoft, for giving Tumblr years of fodder. Um, <laughs> all right. So next up, the PC gaming show. Oh, man. Been... Okay. Didn't see that so one. Didn't see I, that one. I have mixed oh, feelings on this. Um, yeah. My negative feelings are mostly due to the fact that there are, I think, three Battle Royale games showed off. Yep. Holy this crap. Felt, really? This felt like the Everything in the Kitchen Sink show. Um, none of the Battlegrounds look great, honestly. Um, oh, I'm just completely ignoring them. Because I just don't yeah, <laughs> they feel like noise. They feel like noise because what's going to build battleground games more than anything is what are the streamers playing. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, like, if tomorrow Ninja says I'm going to be playing Mavericks Proving Ground, well, guess what? Mavericks Proving Ground is about to be a huge hit. You know, um, that's what I've noticed about battle royales is that, I, I like within the streaming community, you need endless content, right? So yeah. think about that. You need a game you can play forever. Yeah. Like, that's your game. How many games out there do you think can give you that? Not very many, but Battleground games or Battle Royale games are perfect for that, right? Because every match is a little bit different. And, you know, it, you start from scratch. You don't, it's not, you're not playing your level 100 World of Warcraft character. Um, so because of that, you know, um, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, you know... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. Um, yeah, you yeah. you end up kind of kind of doing a little bit of everything. Um, I mean, I it, think the market is uh, like you know when when PUBG came out, everybody was saying, "Oh, yeah, that's probably the trend for the next couple of years," and this just proves it. Like, hey, that was uh, popular, so then Fortnite came out, and that became even more popular, so now a bunch of people will be creating this, this kind my, of game. My buddy who streams and plays a lot of Fortnite, because he has to. It's not like he has a choice. He has to, right? To Otherwise, stay relevant. not going to get the views. Right, exactly. He explained it. It used to be MOBAs. It used to sure. be League of Legends. It used to be stuff yeah. like that, because that was, that was your endless content it's game. A, it's always multiplayer games, because right. that's a human element that makes it different. Yeah, they want to see you pwn noobs. They want to see you do things and moves and stuff that they can't do, right? Um, because that's what generates content. Oh, shit, did you see what this guy did? Pwning um, noobs. Yep, and that's what gets you the clips, which gets you the... It's, it's like a constantly feeding itself engine, right? Um, do people so still be... say that, boning noobs? Like, oh, 100%. actually, yeah. oh I, my god! I think, <laughs> but oh, is it like wrecking scrubs now, or am I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, scrub. Okay, scrub. I, I don't know. I I'm too old for this. It's probably an emoji. Maybe. Like they probably don't even type actual letters at this point. It's probably just you're an emoji, too old but... for this verb. Oh, yeah, I'm it's, it's QQ now, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't but fucking so, know. And it's like some... so. As... Yeah, go ahead. 
but it ends up building on itself so that you build the community that only wants to watch this game so you only stream this game so do you know what i'm talking about it's like yeah. it's just it's an self, ouroboros self of propelling propelling it's, it's self -propel yeah it's, it's self propelling yourself into irrelevance because the stuff yeah. that keeps you irrelevant what keeps you relevant is playing what the kids are into but then you're stuck playing that until something else comes along but now you're stuck playing the old thing and now you can't transition to the new thing because you're going to lose whatever viewers are still holding onto your channel yeah, like my buddy who streams, uh, he streams PUBG, right? Yeah. He'll get people come into his stream. All he streams is PUBG for the most part. He'll get people come in and say, play Fortnite. And it's like, what the fuck? There's a million people out there playing Fortnite. Why do you, you know what I mean? But that's the, it's kind of like this weird entitlement process of I'm the guy paying for stuff. You do what I want. It, and that's, that whole streaming world is where these battle royales are becoming a thing. I don't know anybody outside of my friends who stream who play battle royales. I'll put it to you that way. I know people play them. I know they're popular, uh, but I oh, I don't kids have love them, right? Yeah. Well, my ah, kid, the kids, the kids my kid love them. Watches people play Fortnite, but he doesn't play Fortnite. And do you know what I mean? Like that's his world. It's like I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch Ali A. I'm gonna watch Ninja. I'm gonna watch these guys play Fortnite, but he doesn't load up I, Fortnite I because he's watching no them. I still have no idea who Ninja is. I've heard it uh, multiple will, times. But... I have a... no fucking idea. Didn't he appear uh, on w one of these conferences? Yeah, he uh, he he played a pro am uh, Fortnite match and won. Um, this guy Ninja's not a kid. He's been around for a while. He was very big in the Halo Two scene. I think he kind of moved on to H One Z One. Kind of dropped off the radar for a little bit. I think he maybe played maybe like Star Wars: The Old Republic. He's a very skilled gamer who has a very good way of, of of bringing people into what he's doing and why he's doing it is the best way I can explain it. So when you watch him play, I feel like he's one of the few streamers who's not just all about, oh, look at this crazy shit I did. He can kind of like bring you into, oh, yeah, I built this because it would do this, which would make that guy do that, okay, which makes him – yeah, 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 and he's interesting. He's entertaining. So, like, if you think of the Venn diagram of successful streamers, right? It's is this game popular right now? Am I good at this game? And and am am I entertaining? Right? Yeah. He's one of the few who are all three, right? I'm and you none kinda, of the three. Dang. <laughs> you kind of got like the games. I'm not popular on the internet. But then, like, outside of those circles, you kind of got Doctor Disrespect, who's maybe. You know he's good at the game and maybe entertaining, but he just plays a character. He, you know, he's <laughs> not. Doctor disrespect. Um, oh lord. We could okay. do a whole podcast on streaming. Yeah, but... probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we did the we whole did an episode on streaming. I'm like, like an alien here. Day. I have no. Yeah. I have like no frame of, of reference. Episodes, actually. Um, <laughs> like so amazing listening to it. At some point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but anyway, what I'm saying about battle royales is the reason you're seeing all these announced right now is because they have to build hype starting now. Um, while you're while you're seeing all these early, early, early release uh, battle royales, is they have to right now. When when Cliffy B Studio was about to go under, what did he do? Cobbled oh, yeah. together a battle royale and pushed out the door as fast as he can because they know yeah, if these exactly things catch what, on, that's exactly how Fortnite did. Yep. Fortnite, Fortnite was garbage game for and that nobody played, and then they switched to Battle Royale, and then it blew up like a fucking mushroom cloud. Yeah, it's it's still considered early access. Like yeah. think about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the reason we're gonna this is gonna be the norm for E3 is gonna be uh, I think they're gonna probably use shows, but they're gonna be like let's get these out the door as fast as we can, get some kind of hype, get a beta out or an alpha or whatever the hell you want to call it, and get people playing this game right now. Because if we wait, something else is going to come along and do that. Yeah, and oh, yeah. player base. But, but it's but, like the, it has been like that for years and years. Different yeah. like, games come in into it was fashion. Just, it was just MOBAs before, right? Like yeah, how many... and before that, something else, and like yep. Call of Duties, and like before that, even something else. Yeah, yeah. It'll just there'll be another fad in a couple of years, and yeah. we'll wonder why we cared about Battle Royale in the first place. Nah, I don't think we will wonder. I I still get it why MOBAs are popu were popular. I still get it why Call of Duty revolutionized the uh, uh, first person perspective uh, shooter genre. So you you can see where like it's okay. an innovation. I think it's popular. an innovation. It's just, yeah, 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 it's where an innovation. It's gonna cut like nobody's gonna be making yeah battle royale games fifteen years no. down the line. Probably. No, no, probably. no, no, no. 
it's it's like it's like how nobody makes MMOs now. Do, do you remember when it was like it, you have these cycles where we need a new WoW, we need a new League of Legends, now we need a new Fortnite. Yeah. It, something's gonna come along, but yeah, I mean, remember it's... when everyone was making MMOs? Yeah, that was now, crazy. Now you can't find an MMO. Like I was yeah. in the mood for an MMO, and I was like, "What's out there?" And I was like, "Fuck, nope, Black nothing. Desert Online. That's Fortnite. it." Yeah. <laughs> Fortnite is a fucking yeah. MMO now. Yeah, yeah. So other stuff that was shown off for the PC gaming show, um, I think one of the biggest announcements, weirdly enough, is Yakuza's coming to PC. <laughs> yeah. That's biggest for you, yeah. Mario Times. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was strange. Um, other yeah. interesting announcements. There's a shark RPG coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, th there's a mobile game called uh, what is it? Hungry Shark. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that, like kind of goofy, you know, silly. Um, and uh, it's by the guys who did Goat Simulator, I think. Uh, oh, they're publishing okay. it, I believe, but it's oh, okay. being made by Tripwire. Oh, okay, right. okay, that makes sense. Or it might be the other they, way around, it... but Tripwire is involved somehow. Yeah. Or... Um, it looked goofy. It didn't look like super serious. Like um, it looked like they were having fun with you know you're jumping up on land and eating people who are sunbathing and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can land shark it. I, I'm kind of excited, but I need to see yeah, more. Uh, other things they showed off: um, Anno 1800, which uh, um, or 1880, whatever it's called, wasn't shown off at the Ubisoft conference, but. Those. Yeah, you know what's weird about that? Uh, I don't know if you, you guys ever played the Anno games. Yeah. Um, 1800 seems like a weird place to start a, a, a world-building game. Because they're kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the kind of game where like you need to chop trees to build uh, houses to house workers to farm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like It's like one of those But I, I don't know, games. man. The, uh, the date adds to nine, so I think they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. That's their goal, right? Yeah, um, that's always their goal. Yeah, uh, it looked kind of weird. Because um, usually these games are set in like the 1500s or like the, yeah. set, you know, or like the 20, like, they, I think they have one in the future, but the general idea is that, yeah. yeah the, the best one is, is in the future. I think the best one's in the future. But you're I building think. something from scratch and making it into something. 1800 seems like a weird, like, half step between nothing and, yeah, you should probably already by now have factories in your town if it's going to be anything. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, 1800 is an interesting time in human yeah, time. Like, I agree, uh, I agree. Industrial Revolution, you know. It's just a weird place to start. Um, no, I guess, yeah. Uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, what I, I don't heard. know. Fuck I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I, I don't get it. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm. I also don't give a shit. I. I. I, I just mm. don't give a shit about that property anymore in general. I like the first season of the adventure games and everything. Me too. Else, yeah. I don't. Give I, a shit. I, I'm interested in what looks like the uh, Star Control reboot. Yeah. Um, and Star Control is kind of one of those like games that I always like dabbled in, and I never really put I think enough time into it. But I like what they showed. It felt like a cool kind of like Star Stardock is one of those games that like every ten years they come out with like a you know the greatest game of of a generation somehow there's just such a weird little studio or whatever. Um, but I like I really like what they showed. Um, and the idea of, you know, actually being that uh, mixing RPG with X3 or X4 now, I guess, um, I, I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it seems like it could be, if they can pull it off, it's a really ambitious game, but if they can pull it off, I think it'll be really good. And the, uh, the, the final sort of biggest announcement from the conference was Hitman 2. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. That looks cool. I I got I had mixed feelings on Hitman. I think we talked about it. I don't I didn't like the way it made you play each contract like ten different times to um, get to get all the different unique whatever things in each stage. Um, I, but, but, I, but the gameplay itself was very good. Yeah, the gameplay is really tight. I, I really <laughs> like the. I don't know how to describe the graphics. It's almost like I don't know, like sterile feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I like I think that. That sort of suits the the franchise. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's got potential to be a really good game. I just hope that they kind of maybe make a way for each stage to feel a little more. Well, this isn't a stage you're gonna have to pay ten times. I like the was the that, that's the hitman, right? You play the stage over and over. Not and over always. And over. I mean, usually each stage had like a unique kill. You know what I mean? Like if you wanted, like there, there was yeah. like just one specific way. But 
as long as you were silent and quiet the whole way, it didn't, the game really didn't fault you. But now it's like, well, now you got to kill the guy with this. You got to kill the guy with that. You got to, you know. I mean, it, it was due sure to, to being episodic, I think. And yeah, this yeah. one won't be. So, yeah. So they want to make it sort of have everything all one go. Right. Yeah, I think. And they won't really feel the need to repeat the content. Yeah. Um, yeah, the PC gaming show wasn't bad. It just, it felt like. I, I skipped know. it. I, I feel like it. it. I feel like it just drags every year, and I don't. Mm -hmm. I think it should just ditch the interview format. I don't think it. Works. I agree. I, I agree. It, just, like Sean Plot or whatever his name is is not even a bad interviewer. It's just there's too much. Like cut down the number of interviews by half, and I think you're you've got a much better show. Uh, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the last conference of Monday, which was Cerny. Oh my god, Cerny. what a fucking train wreck of a conference, right? Oh, really? <laughs> nah. I thought so. It was, I, it was, this one was badly paced. This one yes, was, I would, it, was it was extraordinarily badly paced. I wouldn't say it was a train wreck. Well, no. look, here's. I feel like they tried to make the experience cool for the 2,000 journalists and then fucked it up for everybody else watching from home. Yeah. The way they even just the, kinda... Even the 2,000 journalists weren't happy to be moving yeah, like, between what's conferences. The point? Yeah, I, I, I think they should have just I, done the entire thing under the tent, personally. Nah, yeah. fuck the tent. Just get, the, just make a damn conference like a normal damn conference and don't the like. The sound it. quality was awful in that first area too. Uh, I don't know what you guys were watching. I I think I switched between. I think I went from like YouTube to Twitch to. I, I don't watched remember. the GameSpot archive of it. I was watching on Giant Bomb, so I'm not quite sure. They probably cleaned up the sound. I watched a little bit on Giant Bomb. You know, the sound you couldn't always hear well, but they there was yeah. like sound skipping, mm -hmm. and like the, the mics were constantly buzzing. Just oh yeah, was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The I mics were weird. One of, the, buzzing. one of the trailers, I forget, had a lot of sound skipping. I forget which one. Yeah. Um. So I mean, like, I, I that pacing was weird, and I mean, I get what they try to do. They just try to show the same. The four games, but we Last of Us Part Two we knew was coming out. We knew it's gonna look great. I yeah. still don't know if I really I'm gonna play it. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for it. I actually really like Last of Us, but it's a game I don't know if it needed to be made. You know, like this better be a good game. Um yeah. Spider Man they spent a lot of time on it. Spider Man comes out like next week. No, no, <laughs> you no, know what I mean? Week. Like it's coming out uh this fall, I believe. It's, yeah. it's it's soon though, but I mean, like, it seems like a lot of showtime for a game that almost ready re looks almost ready. Yeah, and there was no real big major announcements that I can think of besides. The only the I, I, there's one announcement. They announced Nio two. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, and and fucking uh, Nio two and also oh de Hasine. Ghosts of Tsushima and no, yeah, yeah. There was one more, the yeah, the was... weird one oh, that yeah, Control. Sorry. Yeah, Control. Control. Yeah, yeah. Control. Okay. Yeah. They announced Control. They announced Control actually after the conference. Which yeah, is yeah. Um, Con Control is Quantum Break, right? Yeah, I... yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The okay, same, I'm just the same sure. dev. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw quantum, that. I was like, this is Quantum, quantum break. break with a lady. That's yeah, it, it looks like. like that. Um, which I'm fine with, but it looked they showed off some gameplay footage not at the conference, which is where they should have shown it off. But on yeah. the show floor, and it looked kind of janky. Yeah, like, it looked kind of weird. Aren't, aren't yes, the prime they looked really bad. But it looked really with early. Ghost of Tsushima. The animations don't look like they're ready for prime time. I mean, they have time um, to work on it. I think no, it I up. think like Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, sorry, how do you pronounce that? Tsushima. Tsushima? Yeah. Um, it looked like it was. It looked like it was actual gameplay more than like very. Yeah, uh, you it know, guided. That's why it looked a little bit more janky, uh, but I think it looked very interesting, like very it, polished. I mean, and, I, I, th I think I think the gonna game's gonna look cool. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think the game's gonna look cool, but it looked very sterile to me, and that mm. combat was awful. I mean, oh really? No, I said the combat reminded me of Bushido Blade, which well, I am very excited. Bushido Blade, though, if you hit someone with a katana one time, they die. No, this game no, had, no, like, no, 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 hacking no, 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 away no. at each how other. How long? How long have you played Bushido Blade? How long? Oh, not, yeah, not oh, because I played it last one. year, and I was surprised that, like, I played. Yeah, I played when I was a kid, but uh, I played last year, and I was like, oh, I thought you like just stab the guy, and he died instantly. 
Nah, yeah. this looks exactly like Bushido Blade. Sometimes uh, you stab a guy 15 times and he doesn't die, and one time you stab him in the head and that's over. I think, yeah. let me put it this way, I need to see some more footage of this to, oh, 100%. to figure out how I feel. Yeah, of course. I'm yeah. But you know what optimistic. looked impro- it looked impressive, the gl- grass looked very impressive and the vis- vista- vistas looked very yeah. impressive. Yeah, like that the... looks, looks incredible. I think it's but, a yeah. nice new kind of novel setting we haven't seen before in a game that gets back to what i was saying at the beginning though guys that is the sony look right now right like as soon as i saw like the green grass and the vista and the samurai i was like okay it's a sony game like you could have you could have shown me that and not had anything in there so who's this game for i would have said sony because that's Mm -hmm. what they do right like that could have been kratos standing at the top of the hill or or you know what i mean or alloy or any of the other characters that like this is what Sony does now is these like grand vistas and the cinematic stuff, but the games always kind of feel kind of similar. Soulless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, when well, I, when I, I'll I... reserve my judgment. I think yeah. like, I mean, they, I, I they feel of... different. Yeah. Like God of War and, um, uh, the Horizon Zero Dawn feel very different. It's like completely different games to me. Like oh. Horizon Zero Dawn is like a huge open world and, uh, God of War is more, linear experience so this is i mean this yeah. is infamous right studio yeah uh, yeah infamous, yeah. yeah sucker I mean, punch they probably know what they're doing infamous has kind of been all over as a series so yeah i, but, I think it'll come out it'll be pretty good I, i'll wait uh, for reviews on it um the other game from the conference that we haven't discussed yet is um what's his face death stranding guys yeah. I'm ready to shit all over this game. Yeah, I don't. You gotta hold me back, cause <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of this game. Oh, I just want to know what the game is. Yes, I I have I'm nothing getting, to. I'm starting to get like, this is probably the wrong comparison to make. Remember No Man's Sky and how we didn't know what it was until it came out. Yeah, the people no, like, I don't, I don't think this is the ap- appropriate. Uh, uh, appro- appropriate. Uh, it's not. An app it's comparison. not... It's not an app comparison, because I think. Like it's Hideo Kojima has chops that I don't think this. Does I it? don't think it showed us really uh, anything. I don't think it showed us anything um, exceptional in terms of gameplay. I think it doesn't have to be. Like the I don't. Gameplay I don't they know, showed I... was was him walking. Yeah, and feet. I and I <laughs> love it, and I I fucking love this man. I uh, this is the game I wanted it to be. I don't uh, want it to be a fucking holy crap like another shooter or I mean, like I don't another want it to be that either. I just thought that Kojima would do something different than a walking simulator. I, no, I like walking he simulators. never did anything di- different. He made a bunch of shooting games. Let's be honest. It ha- they had some uh, gimmicks to them, but it was just shooting games. I can't wait to awesome. balance the boxes on my back perfectly. And I, the... I love it. That's <laughs> what I want to play. I want to play a weird meditative experience where uh, that you're a courier and you just traverse these lands. I, uh, I fucking I love that. I just opposite. want to know what I'm doing in this game, you know? Not... Uh, th- you saw what you're doing with this game. You're like, like traveling. From hole to hole? Yeah, fantastic. I love it. That's I what I want. I, I don't know if I can sustain me for 30 hours. No. I, yeah. I will play like, the shit out of this I, game. I, I, can think this like, I, I think this is just a cool like three hour experience buried in what's uh, going on. I will play you're the You're being shit very out. generous with 30 hours. 30 hours of cutscenes at least. Then you got to get into the Lale Lilo Lu stuff. That's going to be another 12 hours. A guy peeing himself for an hour. Uh, the cut and then, scenes like a, a themselves... woman writhing around half naked. In the <laughs> Hopefully, there's uh, less of that. Uh, the uh, cut scenes reminded me of like weird Aronofsky movies or something. Yeah, I got that vibe. Like, right. yeah, it, and 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 the gameplay like enhanced that feeling. I think that's why I'm not uh, negative towards it. I think it's what like builds a yeah. uh, atmosphere uh, yeah, that I, I'm I in clarify. tune with, and I. And and Kojima also makes excellent trailers, so like the music also helped, uh, and the graphics of the motion capture are really good. Okay. So I I really felt a good, good vibe okay. from this game. Let me clarify. I don't feel. I'm not saying this game is going to be bad. I'm saying. I'm not sure. It could be the, garbage. I mean, yeah, maybe it will be. I don't think it will be, but what I'm trying to say is, I don't think they've revealed enough concrete information about this game. Yes. For how much they've hyped it up and advertised it and shown off of it, I'm, yeah, not, that, I'm not sure how people hyped it up more than they hyped it themselves. Because I mean, well, no, that's Kojima's not true. But they know have a... that, that yeah, he generates yeah. hype. 
That's true. Right? That's true. So, that's true. They have a fucking Norman Reedus uh, at E3. They had that fucking Norman Reedus statue. So okay, they yeah. they know what they're doing and now with their money. That Lindsay Va- Lindsay Wagner and and Leo Stidula yeah. in the game. So there's star power here. That yeah yeah yeah. Gonna but it, to, I'm yeah. gonna say I feel good about it. I, the gameplay I'm not sure what it is. They haven't shown yeah, that's much the problem. of this. Game. I want to know what it is. So it's yeah, just I, the garbage. I don't know. Kojima's always wanted. I feel like to be a director, right? I wonder if oh, yeah. this wouldn't have been a better movie because what I've seen so far, I like Mur saying. I think I think the internet's kind of on this one too. Like people are starting to kind of turn on it. Like very shit or get off the pot. Show us what the hell we're doing in this game. If, other if, than if if walking around is what you're doing with this in this game, I'm on it. I'm yeah, I'm yeah really but clear. they should just come around and say that finally. Yeah, like, like, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Or like, I'm, you know, a, the... I'm a walking simulator evangelist, <laughs> like. But you know, I, I, if if this world is super confusing and weird, and I'm just walking around and figuring shit out, I would love that uh, because the world looks weird and interesting and kind of yeah. it doesn't exactly look like Earth. Oh, it's I, like I, other I could totally end up loving this game. I just yeah, like I I like the look. I like kind of like uh, the time fall thing. I I I I like the weirdness of it. I would love to see more gameplay. I would love to see more gameplay. Oh uh, yeah, same here. Uh, anything else we want to mention about Sony before we move on to the final conference? I mean, it's the biggest surprise at Sony that wasn't a lot of surprises. <laughs> like, I feel like I mean, they yeah, said this is what it's going to be, I and then it like, was. I feel like they really just should have, like, Nio Two is the pr- and and Control, like the from from Remedy. These are these could be two pretty high profile announcements, and it's weird if they were kind of glossed over. Right, I especially Nio uh, Two. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah. Nio Two is being made. I don't think Nio was as big of a deal as you may think it is was I, because it wasn't that big. It was I mean, like it sold like what two three billion copies. I guess so. Yeah, I, I didn't. I I like the Soul games and I haven't bought that because mostly I've read in while well, I've read in the reviews didn't interest me. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, 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 yeah. I'm just saying like 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 the new game from Remedy, right? If you've got that, yeah, probably... but you. The last game from Remedy, you know, that break. that bur- burned some bridges, man. Burned some bridges. Were people really that negative on it? I think Quantum Break really was kind of crappy, and people okay. didn't like it at all. That's fair. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on to Nintendo. Yeah. Which, okay, so I'm just going to tell you my opinion I on this. I don't want to talk about Nintendo, honestly. I, there was nothing. <laughs> okay. There was one game that interests me. I get it. Uh, okay, I get it. I'm just gonna give you my opinion on this. I like sure. to divide this conference into two, which is the half yeah. I cared about and the half I didn't. And the half I cared about came first, and the half I didn't care about came second. And you can uh, guess what I'm trying to I, say here. Yeah, I I don't think I don't know a, a single person. I know there's plenty because Smash is probably the biggest fighting game. Yeah. But I don't know a single person on the internet or off the internet that was excited by that Smash fucking block of shit. They just kind of kept going and it's going like and going. It. With. Like... it went on. I, it was like it was a Nintendo Direct, right? Yeah. No. Was this, uh, no like... Yeah. It was a Nintendo. It thing. wasn't. It was oh, a Nintendo man. Direct. Nintendo only does Directs now. I mean, oh, okay. But it was a conference thing. It, it, they do it every year. Yeah, and they, they, do they usually they do, do it with direct. more announcements and with yeah. interesting announcements. And this time it was like, yeah, what yeah, are you doing? Fortnite, I guess, was kind of big. Um, I guess. Fire like, Emblem? I don't know. I, mean, I, like... I like Fire Emblem. That's so my I, one game. The, thi- the things that excited me from this were, were Fire Emblem and the new mecha game yeah. they showed off. Those looked really good. Uh, the mecha game looked cool but it also looked janky for me like i kind of polish that up right if they yeah could yeah up, yeah like, sure, control, they sure. could it but up. it wasn't like i i didn't expect they it, it surprised me that they you know started the conference with that one like, yeah, yeah. It seems I, like a weird start I, if i were me i would start with like fire emblem or xenoblade yeah right? Exactly. Start with yeah. a big conference, I, then you throw I will fucking action. show Metroid at any fucking point in this conference. Like, yeah. what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, no Metroid. Or Pokemon. Uh, no Yoshi. They've built, I mean, po- Pokemon, they, they had the direct earlier. Let me ask you guys this. Out. You guys are probably more into Nintendo than I am at this point. I mean, I've got a Switch, but, I'm, you know. 
Are, do you think they're just going to do basically like one Nintendo game a year? Is that kind of their plan for the Switch? Oh, like, I you hope not. Your... I really hope it's more like three or four. Uh, yeah, just one. three or four, um, hopefully, because one game that doesn't seem like I. I think it does, they, it does... My guess is if they just blew their wad last year, they have nothing this year, and there's <laughs> going to be a bunch of stuff in 2019. Yeah, well, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, because you've got Smash Bros, you've got Metroid eventually, right? And yeah. then I so feel like they're gonna do like coming this fall. So yeah, de- December, yeah. the eighth of December. That's still that's so... not a. I mean, has it been a great year for the Switch that I'm missing? No, out? no, it hasn't no. Been whatsoever. Um, yeah, and they. Uh, I wish like, I bet they have a bunch of things under the hood. So why didn't they just tease them again? Like anything, I, I, anything, anything. Not fucking twenty minutes of Smash Brothers. It was so much Smash Brothers. I, like, it was I, honestly... granular. It was like, <laughs> it look at this be... three I... dodges versus one dodge. Fucking I'm motherfucking I'm sure bullshit. that people who are super into Smash got something out of it. I'm just not one of those people. And I'm like, no, well, no. Show me more. Show me more Fire Emblem. Show me more, no, but... more Mario Party. You know. Like, why? Why we go through this? I... Let, let me say this. Let me say this. If it it if this was a, just a normal Nintendo Direct, like any other week, any other month, okay, fine. But this shit was you. A bunch of people were watching that usually don't you know in, don't right? watch. Yeah, exactly. So you keep it as general as possible. You don't get mm-hmm. into the nitty gritty of one game. That's weird. Yeah, I it felt really weird to me. This I, remember yeah. earlier when I was like, and uh, like I, I enjoyed E3, and then there was one conference. I was like, this felt like, I don't know, like this, mm-hmm. like I I get the Volvers at least out there to troll and do whatever. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I can kind of ignore that, but I don't understand. Nintendo is a one of the big three. This they need to bring it, and I feel and like they did last year. Which is why yeah, this, this year was so weird. Um. Yeah, so this was this was a weird conference for me in that I, like I said, I liked the first half and I did not like the second half. And yeah, I just it's we, it was weird to go from that transition. That quickly. but I I again, Smash Brothers is I I from what I've heard is huge. So I mean, probably I might even buy it. It's just I don't care about it at that level. I of never played it. I never I never played a Smash game, but I, I may yeah, buy I, this one. I'm I don't know. Smash I mean, to me like feels Smash. like but... it's just I don't know if I like it enough to worry about whether there are three dodges versus one or whether Bayonetta's yeah. sound effects are different in her different. Yeah, exactly. Costumes. We made over ten thousand changes. I'm like, what? What? Like, are you showing me sound clips of two different guns firing? <laughs> I don't give a shit. I mean, that's a cool Easter egg. Don't get me wrong. I just don't. Like, is just it a cool Easter egg? Worthy. Is it really? Because I don't know. Is it a cool Easter egg? It's like very tiny detail that. I, uh, Again, I mean, if you're a Bayonetta fan, I'm sure it's great for you, but like the rest I of us, I guess oh. so. If you're a Smash Brothers and a Bayonetta fan, so niche without within a niche. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Like, I don't know. Not only are you into fucking Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> not only are you into Smash Bros, but like at the level that you played at competitions, that's who that yeah. felt like it was for. Like people were like, "Oh wow, I can frame skip out of this to this." Wow, it's, and I'm like, I think it's Nintendo made the mistake of listening to the FGC on this. Like the fighting game community has been really vocal over the past few years. Like, stop ignoring us, Nintendo. You know. Yeah, but give fighting us some, game community is like and a... they finally gave them goodies and then they realized wait we ignored everybody fucking yeah this. You know? <laughs> fighting game, i i listen fighting game community it can be a good community there's some of course bad apples there no, but it's a fantastic usually community. it's a it's just, yeah it's a fantastic community but it's a, it's a small community comparatively like yeah. it's not like the biggest thing in the world and i don't know this felt like it should be more more pleasing to everyone that's tuning into e3 which is yeah this like... is e3 this isn't this isn't like dream hack where like people are playing you know nothing but fighting games or something and it's yeah. designed around... maybe they had nothing else maybe that's weirdly enough thing. i yeah that's what i think that's what i think i don't like, think they do they had three things and they were like oh shit one of those things have to take up 30 minutes 30 of minutes. the show. But then just do, pull a and they're like, ah, and, and cut the show down to half an hour. Smash. It just didn't need to be 45 minutes, you know? I guess yeah. so. I don't, yeah. I don't know. And I think I think that would have played a lot better. Like, if they'd, if they'd spent, you know, 10 minutes on Smash instead of 25, I'd feel a lot 
better about Nintendo right now. It was weird that they showed every special move of every character. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching at this point? <laughs> like, oh my god. And I really actually thought, is there something after this? Like, there has to be something after this. They I wouldn't put would this fucking... I would be rewarded for sitting through all that. And yeah, like, exactly. No, something, like, anything. Fuck you, Nintendo. And then Fuck they're you. like, ah, one more surprise, Ripley. And I'm like, who gives a shit? What? <laughs> it really, Again, it really I, did kind I'm of excited that Ridley's coming to Smash. It's just I did not need 25 minutes of this. Yeah, I, it's just bizarre. That that is 100 percent where I kind of I, I kind of ended it. I was like, this is for people who aren't me. I get that, yeah. but they had nothing for me. They had like it felt like they just were like, all right, if you're not in Smash, good luck. Not that you for this E3. I also thought that it is very very strange that this game, that's like a remaster basically of the last game from Wii U. Uh, is getting like uh, this much attention? Like, mm -hmm. they, make a new fucking they, Smash it's game. A, it's What's really wrong with you? They've basically it's not really a port. They've basically rebuilt the game, which is why I don't know why it's they said ten thousand changes. Just yeah, said, but Here's it doesn't game. look like it, man. It like looks exactly like that game, and they're like saying what changes they made. So it looks like it's I'm, basically yeah. the same thing. As, yeah, they're selling it wrong. They should just say, yeah. Here's a new Smash game. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, here's what we've made. It's new. It's so, uh, comparison or something. Comparisons. It looked like the fucking same thing. Yeah. And yeah, and I, it's I don't. Not, I, it behooves them it's to say weird. it's not, which they do I, afterwards. Yeah. But you know, say that in the direct. Smash has always kind of looked a generation behind. Uh, that's yeah. my opinion of it. it. It just always has. I don't know if it takes a really long time to make those games or wrangle There's the right There's fucking characters in that yeah. game, so I, I realize it takes a long time. But so. it, it's it's always been like the worst looking game of Nintendo's generation when you, they... Yeah, yeah, but you know why I also thought that it was the same game? Because only one new character that hasn't been in any Smash game before. I know they're doing All Stars, All Stars kind of thing, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, oh, we just yeah, rehashed like everything that they, was before. You think they'd say try to do some cross promotion with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and get, you know, Rex or Pyra in there for instance. Anything, anything from the last couple of years of Nintendo. I mean, and they they're got, like just... They got the Inkling in there too. Yeah, they they got the Inkling. That's true. So I'll give them yeah, that. I mean, uh, there's always rumors of like crossovers, right? Like, I don't know who. Um... I mean, they, they there won't be any more. 64 characters in a fighting game. Yeah, I think they, they, yeah, they, they should have got new, new, some new characters like, you know, Shovel Knight. Um, if you were a, like a Smash Brothers style game fan, wasn't Jump set or whatever the hell that game was. Isn't that Force? your game? Yeah, um, wasn't yeah. that the game that you were psyched for anyway? I mean, that's every I, damn. I mean, I'm a weeaboo, but I'm not that kind of weeaboo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're they're gonna be out there, and I mean that that scene is gonna be. Yeah, I think, I, know. I think everybody's sort of occupied with Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which is apparently a really good game. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see if Jump Force can make its uh, its mark. Um, anything else you guys want to mention about the Nintendo conference before we move on to I, discussing? I don't even know if there are any no, I, I don't think there's much more to <laughs> say about it. We talked about Smash, so I think we're <laughs> I covered it. I, I just want to see more Fire Emblem. That's, that's yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. I like Fire Emblem. Right. Um, I, I liked a bunch of games that like appeared. Some of them like you didn't have enough gameplay. Like I'm interested in Doom, but. There's, there wasn't much there, you know. They just said, ah, they're going, going to be next Doom, and it's probably going to be on Earth. Okay, uh, you know, they they uh, showed like a little bit of Ori too, and also a, not much there. Yeah. Um, what I really liked, though, <clears throat> the couple of games I would like to like play this moment. If somebody asked me, hey, which four games would you like to play from the conference right now? I would say Cyberpunk. Uh, Sekiro, Resident Evil 2, and Death Stranding. Okay. So those would probably... With Death Stranding, it's mostly a curiosity because I have no idea what that fucking game is. Uh, with Cyberpunk, um, I am a big fan of the aesthetic. I played Netrunner, Android Netrunner. Um, it's a card game, and all of the things that they showed in the trailer looked exactly like taken from the illustrations from the cards of Netrunner, like one-to-one. -one. Like it was, it was uncanny. 
And I was like, holy shit, yes, I would like to live in that world. Yeah. Um, I, I and and from what I yeah, yeah right. it's, uh, from what I've heard from people uh, that were in the demo, like uh, like they were given the demo and they were like, okay, describing what uh, you know what was in the demo. I was like, huh. That's interesting. I wonder why they didn't show much more of that to yeah, the people because here. that sounds. I was, I was skeptical based on the trailer. Yeah. But what journalists are saying about the demo uh, yeah. makes me very excited. And also, the journalists say, of course, like always, that it could be a, like a perfectly honed vertical slice. And you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe it's all smoke and mirrors, but maybe there's something there. So I would love to play it, see it. I hated yeah. The Witcher. The whole fucking Witcher trilogy, I hate it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hate it. And, I think, and yeah, yeah, I think. What so I was, was going to say is uh, uh, one journalist mentioned that um, what made them confident that it wasn't just all smoke and mirrors was uh, the person who was demoing the game accidentally crashed their car into a barrier while they're demoing it. They're like, "Oops, I wasn't supposed to do that." Um, <laughs> sure. So, so may, yeah, it must have it wasn't perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it is all just yeah. a vertical slice, but as I said, yeah. it, it, the feel and the look of the world and what they describe from the demo is really interesting to me. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I def- yeah. I, I, Cyberpunk is definitely on my top of the list, and and kind of exactly for what you're describing. I didn't know if the Witcher team could pull it off, honestly. Yeah, <clears throat> I didn't hate Witcher. I was kind of lukewarm on it. Oof, it wasn't my game, game of a millennium, but like oh. it was for a lot of people. It was good. But I think, like you're saying, I, I saw enough of that. I'd be like, oh, shit, they get the world. They get the yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, they definitely. They... I listened to Austin Walker from Waypoint, and he is in love with the cyberpunk aesthetic, and he plays a lot of pen and paper games, which is this is based on the uh, uh, pen and paper yeah, cyberpunk, cyberpunk 2020. 2020, 2020 yeah. And he was like describing exactly what it means to live in a cyberpunk world, what it means to play a cyberpunk game. Uh, and it, it 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 seems like they get it, and they get it because they are are communicating very frequently with the creator of the pen and paper game. Yeah, my uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it seems like they will. I if if it if it go, all goes well, it might be one of my favorite open world games because I just so much like the aesthetics. So I will really like it. I will I will probably. Yeah. What I'm really it. excited for about this is they they've emphasized the idea of verticality, right? yeah. That there's um, like there's cities with huge with skyscrapers, skyscrapers. And tall yeah. buildings, like as you'd imagine there would be in the future, and yeah. open world games generally tend to be pretty flat. Flat, yeah. 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 So it's nice yeah. to see you know I'll so, be able so to climb things and you know, ride said elevators it's... to the top of buildings and things like that. Yeah, it's also they said that it's very dense. Right, and that's right. What I, yeah, I, I and that came through in the trailer more than more than width, right? I want depth. Yeah, in my game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also that, but I I really like that this open world isn't like any part of it is like generic because in fantasy and in science fiction, it's very hard to populate and make the worlds dense because you're all not basing it on any one thing. You just have to come up with stuff. So I was very relieved to to hear that it was very dense with things. Like it very yeah. felt uh, authentic in its cyberpunk aesthetic. I want to see something um, that, that is as full of life as like a Yakuza city. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, and that that's like what like the trailers seem to really say to me. Yeah, we get it. You guys want crowded city, crazy shit happening, people modding themselves up. You want cyberpunk, and yeah. here's what we think it is, and it looked close enough to me i'm like cool they get it yeah. they they yeah. know at least at least from the trailer enough hopefully yeah. they will release the demo a little bit too much on the grimy gritty side of cyberpunk which i know is a big part of cyberpunk yeah um, but i think it leaned a little bit too hard into that but but then again hearing the previews or, or yeah. reading the previews uh about the game made me a lot more confident in it yeah they I really had some, hope like... they will release the demo so that we can see it on them by ourselves like i, I mean, really until... hope that It'll come out eventually. Yeah, like yeah. I, they have to give journalists their scoops. So it'll be a few weeks after E3, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, um, I also like Sekiro because you know I'm a huge fan of From Software. Whatever they come up with, I'm I'm going to play. Like, there's no question about it. This looked. Uh, I didn't like um, Dark Souls 3 as much because it was very gray. 
because of course it was great it's about ash and like a world falling apart but i didn't really jive with the aesthetic and this is like very bright but also grotesque and uh i i, I really like the look of the game it also looks more dynamic the fighting looks more dynamic yeah, so i meant to that yeah yeah which i'm i'm really into and also Resident Evil 2 remake because I'm a huge fan of the Resident Evil series and the best games according to like from my perspective are Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 4 and this looks like a mashup of those those two games so uh, you can it's like the perfect game for me I it's definitely yeah. a catnip yeah um, yeah so Kappa where are your highlights uh, Cyberpunk for sure um, everything about Fallout 76 I'm, I'm interested in that's the game like like kind of science was saying that's the game i want to play right now is, is fallout 76 i want to get some buds together i want to you know mm -hmm. i don't know if they're calling them servers or whatnot but i want to you know want to find our little you know spot in the wasteland and, and start doing cool stuff um yeah. i'm excited for what that what i think that game could be whether it is or not i don't know but i'm excited for it um mm -hmm. and then uh odyssey i mean I, i'm i'm glad this is it's been it felt like origin was halfway there but it was pretty much my game of the year last year so you know i, I feel like this they, is the, yeah, if they iterate on it they can make it even better yeah and i mean we're going backwards a little bit more from origins uh i i feel like mm -hmm. the setting is has a ton of potential uh it feels like they're finally saying you know what we're not gonna care what people think you know we're gonna have women lgbt characters all this other stuff and, and it's going to feel like a living world and it's going to be an rpg and you got you know everything about it i think is is what i've wanted always from assassin's creed so uh can't wait to see what happens yeah, yeah. sure looks interesting good um so those are my highlights uh, yeah I how also... about you Merv? yeah how about me um yeah. yeah also cyberpunk 2077 for all the reasons that were mentioned uh i was not super jazzed about the trailer but reading the previews has made me a lot more confident that um, CD Projekt Red knows what they're doing. Yep. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, it's mainly based on the strength of the previous Ori game, but I did yeah. see some yeah. gameplay footage they showed off. They, they uh, showed a the little floor, bit off, yeah. And it looks pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. They've added a whole bunch of new powers, um, new abilities, so it looks really neat. Um, Demon X Machina, again, that's something where the trailer got me interested, but then I saw uh, the, the footage they showed off at Treehouse, they showed off mm -hmm. about 20 minutes of gameplay, and it looks uh, like they that they finally made a mecha game that I think um, is something I really want to play, and I really love the aesthetic of it as well. And finally, b based mostly on the strength of, of its aesthetic, um, it's a game they showed off at the PC Gaming Show called Sable. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, looks and that's awesome. one that looks like Mobius-style art. I've been waiting for that for a long time see that come up in the game and now it's finally here um so i'm super jazzed about that i want to see exactly what it is beyond just kind of wandering these mobius-esque wastelands mm -hmm. so yeah those are my highlights um so to close off the uh, to close off the episode is there anything that you want to uh that you saw at e3 that you are apprehensive of or that you want to see more information about things that you were surprised to see omitted from e3 um, um yeah, omitted where the hell is the avengers game yeah that's what i was gonna <laughs> that was like my two, the what two, the fuck yeah how how do you not announce that on the heels of the biggest movie in history i i don't fucking get it man and it's square enix they specifically moved shit over to them because they were a studio supposed that could get it done right yeah like okay so here's the other thing the next Avengers film, when's that coming out? May 3rd, 2019. You've got to have a game. You've yeah. got to. <laughs> like, you can't man. delay it beyond that. We'll it's see. Got to we'll see. Around, uh, you know, uh, game, game, develop developing is, game development is a, you know, a fickle thing. You know, they might, uh, might have, they may, you know, have, maybe have problems with it. Oh, I'm sure they're having problems with it and they're going to have to a delay teaser. it. A teaser. I just... mean, teaser's. This is a high-profile fuck-up. Yeah, we, if we're talking about teasers and weird things, the whole Nintendo thing, I can't still believe it how they, like, handled most of their IPs. Like, oh, yeah. they have so many things. No Metroid and... Prime 4, no Yoshi. And they yeah, announced it's... afterwards, Yoshi's delayed to 2019. And yeah, exactly. on top of that, nothing new about Shin Megami Tensei V. It's like they've just forgotten yeah. it exists. 
so yeah. I don't understand this. It's it was the weirdest thing. I was I was excited for Nintendo. I felt like okay, we're fi- we're going to find out about all of their hallmark. Yeah, Bayonetta three uh, I... also omitted. Yeah, by ba- Bayonetta three. Where's that? Nobody knows. Like yeah. a bunch of things that should have been on an E three. Uh, they, it was last time. Last time they did it, it the, those games were present there. So where did they go? Like what happened to them? Yeah, yeah it I mean, doesn't I... build. Okay, it doesn't build confidence in Nintendo, which is the problem, right? Because it, yeah. it looks kind of weird. Yeah, like, that, that la- means square last year, both. Yeah, last year after I saw that conference, I was like, oh, I'm buying a Switch. This looks excellent. I bought it. And this time after I watched this conference, I wouldn't have bought a Switch if I yeah. didn't already. Yeah. yeah, I Square didn't announce Final Fantasy. They didn't announce the Avengers game. And then most of their stuff was already announced by Microsoft. I mean that. Yeah, to yeah. Me, like exactly. where's Final where's Fantasy? Final where's Fantasy Avengers? Seven? Yeah, weird. I, I, like how that... long? Did, like they said about Final Fantasy Seven, they not only split it in parts. It was supposed to like be around 2019. So I was, I was, I, I, I was almost certain that we were going to have gameplay, actual gameplay. Same thing. Uh, Same thing. Nothing. Nothing. It the one so weird. The one I I was guessing at but didn't show, uh, and that I was kind of disappointed on, was I think, I don't know if it's soon, but we're going to be getting a Fable reboot, right? Yeah, maybe. At some yeah. point. I, I, I mean, Not I don't know if it's still got the... Picture. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's got the taint of Molyneux still on it, and they're no, waiting for that to burn no. off No, hopefully it doesn't have the taint of Molyneux. <laughs> so I feel like that's coming. I don't know if maybe that that's why they acquired one of the studios they did. I don't know if Fable feels like a great fit for Ninja Theory, but it could be. Um, you know, they did Heavenly Sword, and that kind of had some of that going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's that that one I was surprised about, but nothing for me. I I, I assumed that the square, the entire back half of the square was going to be Avengers. I can't believe it wasn't even there. It, yeah. it, it blows me away. Yeah, the two biggest <laughs> and most surprising ambitions for me were that and Metroid Prime Four, and yeah. like the Avengers one even by an order of magnitude more. I just don't understand how they can't have announced how they haven't officially announced that game yet. It's it's mind boggling. Unless yeah. it's like yep. an Avengers five coming in twenty twenty. Like I don't know what they're doing. I I could do the trailer for them. I mean just have like one of the characters like slowly disappearing to dust and another one kind of like moving into frame and just put Avengers, yeah. whatever the Spoilers fuck the title for Infinity War, by the way. <laughs> If you haven't seen it by now, it's the biggest movie in history. I mean, and they just put <laughs> Avengers coming 2019. That's it. That There's your fucking teaser. It, it's – god damn it. Where is that, that game? In, I guess that's in development hell, and they just don't know when they're going to be able to it, release it. Dude, it was yeah. announced at the beginning of 2017 that they were going to be making it, and they did a – remember, they did a teaser for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that teaser was like nothing. So yeah, maybe it's... they still don't have much for it. Uh, oh, speaking so of crazy. development hell, uh, I guess we finally know that Crackdown 3 is coming next year. Yeah. So yeah. I, okay, I would be super curious to read what happened during the development of this game. Because, like, it was supposed to be, like, my guess is that it was supposed to be pretty much an Xbox One launch title. Yes. And now I would... it's coming out so many years later. If if I had to guess, uh, I, I total guess, but I think what's going on with Microsoft is they are they know they need a system moving rebooting whatever you want to call it exclusive, and Sea of Thieves sucked, and I think State of Decay is an interesting game, but it's not that you yeah. know, um, so I kind of feel like they're like well this is our one chance to get this out the door, I think Scalebound probably wasn't the game they wanted it to be that's why they canceled it and now they're they've got a lot of eggs in this basket and they're what they had sh- what everything what i'd heard about it was it just wasn't there um so i think this might be one of the times where you you know you release a, a finished game that that's good rather than a buggy game that needs to be fixed that release so yeah i'm just, hoping that's what's happening um what's what's strange to me is that polishing usually doesn't take three years yeah. So yeah. there must there must have they must have scrapped a lot of work at some point in, in the Yeah, game. I, I, I there had have been this this trailer looked better than anything I'd seen so far. Um from I mean, I'm just always happy to hear Terry Crews yelling. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but this one looked more like Crackdown gameplay than the other stuff. I, I think the Crackdown mantle has been stolen by Saints Row, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't think anybody would But you would know what happened when, when we uh, said about Terry Crews? I think that in the last trailer, Terry Crews was just like, oh, we're going to do a commercial with Terry Crews. And people had such a positive feedback from it that he said, hell, maybe we should make the Terry, Terry Crews the main character. Right. And they He's redesigned a lot of shit. Though, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they did redesigned a lot of shit to to just match that because they thought, oh, okay, that's actually a better idea than we what we've had. So maybe that set them back some, you know. I don't, think, I don't think redesigning character models takes some. Nah, long. but you know, story and yeah, you had to I, th- record a bunch of lines and. You know. I, there, there had to be something fundamental that they had to reboot that series for. Maybe, I mean, they maybe. they liked it enough that they didn't cancel it like they did Scalebound. The rumor um, is that, but uh, initially it was going to use. Microsoft's cloud computing capabilities for building destruction, uh, but when they decide to allow offline play, they had to completely redesign uh, a bunch of aspects of the game to accommodate that. That's yeah. a rumor, and I don't know how true that is, though. I I, I could see it. I wonder, remember that, that the fundamental thing behind the Xbox One changed. Remember, it was going to be an online-only system with all this other stuff, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see hundred percent that being the reason that they had to say well, look now we have to make this so that someone who never connects to the internet can play this game um yeah anyway. it's yeah. oh it's, man it's, I, I don't know dude crackdown i hope it's good it's one of the games i want to be good honestly like i'm probably never even gonna play it but i do want to see it succeed uh, yeah because that that game looks like it's been through hell um any other thoughts on, on games that you saw at E3 that you wanted to mention? Uh, I feel like we saw a lot of Spider-Man, and that's our. I mean, I know you put this in the notes, but I had this exact same thought. That's Arkham Asylum with Spider-Man, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's Arkham City. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like, wait a minute. Like, as he was doing, like, the flying thing, like, even, like, the way he would, like, pull himself with his web and then kind of launch, I was like, man, that that's the grappling, you know, Yeah, it's the combo. grapple launch mechanic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just wish that it yeah. was more of its own thing than uh, a it, knockoff. It, look, it looks like rights-wise, they only have Spider-Man and the Spider-Man villains, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. It's the only Spider-Man game. It's, yeah, I think it, be, it doesn't need I, a crossover. It'll be fun. It just looks kind of like it looks scale-wise. It looks a little weird to me um, for mm, yeah. what Marvel I think could be doing in gaming. Where yeah. it's just kind of uh, like so I no, I'm the... I, I'm still interested in like very uh, like only yeah. hero the... like I don't need crossovers in every I game. I like the um, the show floor demo I think better than what they showed off during the press conference. They, they cool. did something weird with the UI in the press conference though, right? Like they turned everything off, and then later on when you saw it with all the UI running, the game made a lot more sense. Yeah, because it looked like right. he was just like free running, but then when you see it with the UI, there's like no, there's it's a QTE. Like there's button mm-hmm. presses that are doing all this stuff. It's so, not just like a... yeah, you can actually apparently run up the sides of buildings. Um, yeah, so it's just like a QTE. Which reminded thing. me of the uh, things, Incredible but, yeah. Hulk game on PS2. There was an Incredible Hulk game. Yeah, that Ultimate did exactly Destruction. That. Yeah, yeah, it was very fun. So yeah. hopefully if they have that much freedom and Spider-Man 2 also had that web sli- swinging that everyone likes. So uh, it takes from those games in an interesting way. I will see. It looks fun. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, which is mm-hmm. you know, the sequel to Wolfenstein 2, and now it's starring BJ and Anna's twin daughters. Um, yeah. I think that's actually a good idea. I think they need to move away from BJ. In fact, I, I wish they'd had the balls to keep him dead at the end of... They had the yeah. balls to move that's away silly. from BJ? <laughs> yeah. Um, I sorry. really wish they just let him be dead and that Wolfenstein 2 had been about Anna. Um, Wait, you know, here's the thing is I'm so confused on what the fuck the Wolfenstein timeline even is at this point. It's it hard matter. for me to... It's oh, hard for me to see... even get interested in the series, though. I mean, because like it keeps taking me. I'm like, why are we going to the '80s, but the Nazis are still in charge? I mean, didn't we have any effect at all in any of these other games we've been playing? Like, I don't, I don't know. It, it just I mean, feels they like... split the timeline so many times. It, yeah, it doesn't it, matter. But it's hard for me to. I mean, I, I know you can. It doesn't matter, but it's hard for me to stay interested in a series if we're just gonna like. I understand. Nothing yeah. you do in this game is gonna matter. Like, you gotta have yeah. some continuity. 
Otherwise, it's just what the fuck am I? What do I care about? You know, the '60s. Yeah. It, we it, didn't make a difference. We didn't win. We didn't. You I know. And I understand, but it's a Wolfenstein game, and I'm always like, I'm playing it. It's like, I always, whenever I finish a Wolfenstein game, in back of my head, there's like. Uh, Carl from Aqua Team Hunger Force saying yeah. it don't matter, none of this matters. <laughs> I'm like, just, yeah, just go kill Nazis. That, yeah, yeah. Just, just, I, yeah just, also, you know, just have fun. I don't know. It's it's a strange attitude because I, I get that. Um, you know, killing Nazis is always going to be fun because fuck Nazis, right? Um, but on the other hand, Wolfenstein Two just didn't really come together as a game. It's the mm-hmm. weird sort of game that is less than a sum of its parts. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It um, has a bunch of fun stuff in it, but it just didn't like. It didn't cohere. It, it, that... It's not a bad game, but it's not like a good game. It's like a middle ground. It like has some I, fun cutscenes. I'd, I'd even and... put it teetering on the precipice of bad. Oh no, because... no. I no. had I I there are certain story elements that I reacted to very negatively. I'll put, okay. I'll put it like okay. That. Um, but it, it yeah, it, that's why I'm a little apprehensive because I really loved the New Order. But if they if they go back to sort of that more New Order style of storytelling and gameplay, then I think I'm on board. Um, and I think yeah. banning DJs is the is the best decision they could have made for this franchise. I, I wonder why they're so afraid to push the series forward. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what it feels like to me. Like like they just want it to kind of stay the same. And th- this mm-hmm. game might do that if they finally get rid of BJ. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like like why don't why can't you slowly show what it would look like if the if the American not the Americans but the resistance started winning against the Nazis rather they than will. always having it reset at the same point? I think well, this I... is a side story, the one in the eighties, and the, the next actual game will be. Uh, this is like a DLC for the uh, Wolfenstein Two, from what I remember. Oh, so like like Wolfenstein Twenty Forty, it's like we finally started to get rid of the Nazis. It's too bad that they've taken over Mars. <laughs> like, it's, it's I'm cool with that. Like. Yeah, I, I want to fight the Nazis on Mars. I'm, Interplanetary I'm war. We That's fought the them next on step. Venus in World War Two, so not that not that uh, out of the out of the question. All right, uh, I think that's all we have time for. So um, thank you guys for for joining us on the podcast. And mm-hmm. if you'd thank like you. to keep up to date, uh, follow us on the website at avocadogamescast.wordpress.com. Uh, we're going to post a link dump so you have references to everything we talked about. Um, you can also subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play Music. Just search for Avocado Gamescast. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else you guys want to say before we shut the door? No, it was good E3. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm still thinking about Molyneux Stained. I can't, I can't. <laughs> but except for that. It's everywhere. Huh? Yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Somebody's got to leave it. All right. Um, that's it for us. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye now. Bye-bye.